Well, for a moment there, I thought we were going to the classic film zone just a little bit early. Uh, but here, we're back. We're chilling with Larry Megan. We made it. And um, we have a lot going on tonight. We're doing a show that uh, we're going to feature some watch photography. And uh, that's going to be very exciting. I think there's probably about uh, a dozen guys or so out there right now watching the show, at least, that are waiting for our call. Because we're going to be calling them up live and bringing them into the show to take a look at their pictures. So that's going to be exciting enough. We're going to bring Tim Temple out here in a few minutes. And, um, you know, this was Tim's concept to do a show based on watch photography. So he gets all the credit. Now, um, speaking of the classic film zone, honestly, you guys are going to kill me out there. But really, I 20 minutes ago, I got a text from Abby saying her computer crashed again. So she thought she had it fixed. But I'm sorry if you're going to hang around waiting for to see Savvy Abby. Uh, and you're not really interested in the rest of the show, well then, hey, maybe we'll catch you next week. But uh, she's not going to be in the show tonight. So sorry to tell you that. I will handle the classic film zone tonight. We're going to feature the bridge on the River Kwai. All right. Now, uh, before I get to uh, our, we're going to give away a nice gift tonight. And before I get to that, uh, let me just, you know, say welcome to everybody that's new to Chilling with Larry Megan. You're new to Acorn TV. Uh, the first thing I like to uh, do is encourage you to, Click on the Facebook button and, you know, like our Acorn TV fan page. And um, if you want to do any kind of messaging with each other or you want to send in any questions, that's the place to do it. You go to our Acorn TV fan page and uh, we are monitoring that page tonight and uh, we can take your questions. You can interact with each other there. Just post it on the wall. OK, uh, also uh, click the Twitter button and follow us on Twitter. And the last thing I'm going to encourage you to do is to share this feed. You can click on the share button in the lower right corner of the player and, you know, share it to your Facebook page and, you know, help us spread the word. We'd really appreciate it. All right. Now, um, tonight we're going to give away a pair of earrings. Let's, if we could, Ronnie, uh, let's just show what the earrings look like. And then I'm going to bring out the gentleman that was nice enough to donate the earrings. And as you can see, it's Porsamo Blue. And uh, it's a pair of 21 karat Vermeer you know, genuine gold vermeil uh, earrings with uh, genuine sapphires. And they're donated by an old friend of mine from the jewelry business in Los Angeles, Mo Afshar. And he's a third generation jeweler. Mo, welcome to Chillin' with Larry Megan. Hi, Larry. Thank you for having me. Yeah, well, you know, Mo, uh, back in my days in the jewelry business in L.A., we, we ran into each other a number of times in downtown. But you're still down there. I'm still there. <laughs> Tell us about, real quickly here, before we get into the earrings, uh, tell us a little bit about uh, your life in the jewelry business because you were born into it. Well, as you know, uh, I've been in jewelry business for a long time. The business is still the same. The way to do business has changed, but the business is still the same. Well, um, you know, now your dad was in it? My dad was in it. My grandfather was in it. My grandfather started this business in 1915. So yes. in a few more years, we're going to celebrate our 100th year of doing jewelry business. And, you know, I was really touched that you came all the way from Los Angeles just, just to be here with me tonight. And that was your sole reason for... No, I'm kidding. That's my... <laughs> <laughs> you, you're, you're here because uh, you just debuted a new uh, a line on Shop NBC for the first time. Yeah, we premiered... Porsamo Blue. Tell Por us about Porsamo it. Porsamo Blue jewelry line which is uh, 21 karat gold vermeil over sterling silver with uh, uh, gemstones. Now, I know you do the real gold stuff. You've always done real gold. Right. I mean, and, and 21 karat vermeil is real gold, but it's not solid gold. So why, why the vermeil? Well, vermeil is uh, two and a half micron, which is the thickest plating possible you can do over anything. Yeah, but you're doing it basically because, let's face it, if this was solid gold, the price, with the price of gold the way it is... The price of gold today, no one can afford to buy pure gold. So you have to do vermeil. Right. Well, I don't know if we're going to be able to see this, but Mo was kind enough to donate a nice pair of... Let me see. If it, is that too tight, Ronnie? That's good. It's okay. 21 karat gold vermeil. And, you know, you didn't have to use 21. You could have gone 18. I know, but for the texture, we want it to be rich. We want it to be... Uh, the old Persian uh, look. 
Okay. And you put genuine sapphires. They're about little half characters. Right. Approximately. Uh-huh. Uh, genuine sapphires in the middle. And so right now, what we're going to do, Mo, is we're going to do our first call out of the show because someone is going to win this. And I think this we have a lot of guys watching tonight. This will make a nice Valentine's Day gift for your lady. So here's what we're going to do. Uh, you're going to send in an email to contact at Acorn TV. And you can see it right there on the lower right part of the screen. And what you're going to do is you're going to have to put the secret word in the... Um, subject line and tonight the secret word is pinky now honestly the reason why it's pinky is because we made a switch but that's still the secret word we were going to show adam's rib with spencer tracy and katherine hepburn and of course in that movie they call each other pinky <laughs> but we changed up and we went with the bridge on the river quiet the last minute but we kept the secret word it's pinky it doesn't matter why it's the secret word that's what you must put in the subject line it's pinky and um, in the body of the email Okay, you must put your first name, last name, city, and state. We don't need your phone number right now. We don't need your address right now. First name, last name, city, and state. And we'll probably do at least three of these call-outs during the course of the show, maybe even four. But every time we do one, you have five minutes from right now to send in an entry. So you could have three or four chances in the drawing uh, toward the end of the show to win. So now is the time you want to send in your emails. We've got Ginger uh, working the phone lines and working the email inbox tonight. So you want to send those in for a chance to win these earrings. All right. Very good. Now, Mo, uh, this was – now, I know you were on Shop NBC before because you brought a new watch line this past year in 2011. I saw you at JCK. We spent right, some time together right. talking about it. You brought Aqua Swiss. Right. But what's the story now with Aqua Swiss? Well, uh, I brought Aqua Swiss to Shop NBC and uh – that's what I was supposed to do, and I did it. But is that your line? That's m uh, my brother's line. So it's not my own line. So why did your why didn't your brother bring it? I and mean, why didn't he go on the air, or he counts on you to do that? Uh, well, we, I probably have a better marketing skills. Okay. okay. And that's why he asked me to do that. You didn't lose a bet or something like no, that. No, I did. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so now you're telling me that you're going to make a new watch line for Porsamo Blue. Yes, I already have. Uh, most probably, we're going to be launching Porsamo Blue watches on Shop NBC for the first week of April. Oh, that's going to be exciting. Yeah, that's what we're shooting at. And you're you're going with all Swiss quartz movements. Everything is Swiss quartz. Everything is Swiss quartz. Nice. Right. And it's going to be for the men or the ladies or both. Uh, we have. Uh, Are these too tough for you? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm kidding around. It's mostly men's, but we have a ladies' uh, style amongst men's also. Yeah, because Mo actually shared with me a prototype of a ladies' watch, and it's beautiful. Right. It really is beautiful. Thank you, Larry. Okay, I, that's why I thought maybe you're doing all ladies. I didn't know you're doing men's too. No, mostly men's. Okay, very, very nice. Thank you. Well, Mo, I want to thank you very much for donating these nice earrings. Somebody's going to get a really nice gift tonight. Uh, we've given away some things here on Shop NBC. We've given away three watches. We've given away movie tickets and, you know, gift cards. But this has a retail value of $190. Now, yes, that's right. Now, I don't expect you sold these for 190 on Shop NBC. We sold it for 189 No. No. <laughs> no way. Actually, was, I'm gonna make, let me guess. Let me guess. Because I didn't watch your – you had a show, what, a show okay. today? Yes, we did. Or two shows today? One show today. Okay. And you had these earrings on, right? No. This wasn't in the in the show? No, it wasn't. My guess, and I could be wrong, if I'm too low, then just hit me, but I'm going to say these are about $99 on Shop NBC. On Shop NBC, or I would say about $129. $129. I might have went a little low. Yeah. Well, I'm thinking about what they make us do with the watches, so that's but why they I do better with the jewelry. Okay. <laughs> so, but even still, even a $129 Shop NBC price, a $190 value for a free gift tonight, that's pretty awesome. So all you guys, get your uh, emails in to contact at Acorn TV, put Pinky in the subject line. That's a beautiful gift. And so, listen, uh, we're going to do a watch show tonight about photography and everything. And Tim's going to come out here. And just because we're, you know, finished over here, Mo, doesn't mean you have to leave. If you have to, I understand. It's Thank pretty, you. It's cold outside. Thank you, Larry. But I have some things out there in the green room, and I made it nice for you. We have a flight to catch tomorrow morning. Oh, you do? You're going, going right back, back to L.A.? Yes. When are you coming back to Minneapolis? Hopefully in a month or so. Okay. Next time I come, we're yes. going to give away for some blue watches. All right. I'll shake on that. I shake on that. Okay. okay. And your your beautiful fiance. Thank does, you. Does she always? Because every time I see you, she's with you. Does she's she always? Always with me. 
I, she doesn't trust you. Is no, that? she doesn't. <laughs> Christina, it's nice to see you. It's nice to have you back again. Thank you, lady. Thank you, Mo. Take care. All right. Have a good one. All right. Okay. So, again, a nice pair of earrings donated by Porsamo Blue. And um, always a pleasure to see Mo. Like I said, I used to see him all the time in L.A. in my days uh, downtown in the jewelry business. And uh, looks like he's doing some good things. All right. Now, for tonight's show, um, once again, we're going to be featuring uh, – uh, watch photography and uh, do, Ronnie do we have that list where did I oh I, I have it here I have it okay my goodness gracious um, we got uh, we had about 20 different guys that sent in uh, pictures and uh, we went through and we ended up picking out I think I think there's 11 or 12 that we're going to try to get to tonight I got an email from one of the guys saying he won't be home till later he had an emergency but he's, on the, he's more toward the West Coast anyway, so we would get to him later. What we're going to try to do, Ronnie, is we're going to try to uh, knock out more of the East Coast guys first because it's getting a little bit later. And uh, anytime Tim wants to come on in, just give him a nudge. <laughs> Tim, you out there? Get in here and save me. Uh, but again, um, so we're going to try and get to all these guys. Ronnie, um, I'll tell you what, why don't we start by getting the first to see if we can get the first guy at least hooked up on the phone uh that's uh the first guy on the list let's see if we can get him out there um this actually is not the list i think my list is out there yeah probably in the um in the in the green room um so tim yes this was uh you you and i did a show about two months ago yeah. it was before uh before thanksgiving and um uh, at that time we were doing the show, we were showing some of your pictures that you took all around the world. And you said, you know, it might be a pretty cool idea to do a show dedicated to photography of, you know, guys who shoot, you know, watches. Yeah. Uh, their own watches. So tell me about that. Well, the the, uh, the theory was that um, there, there, there seemed to be a pretty good response when you and I were just doing, like, you know, basic uh, photography based on, on what I had shot. And obviously a lot of guys are doing uh, photography with watches in, you know, they're outdoors, they're indoors, they're putting them on little, you know, sets and some of them just do it on the wrist. And it occurred to me just watching them on, on Facebook and so on that what if we created a platform where for an hour or 90 or whatever, we don't know what this is going to be, but whatever it is, um, what I got a we feeling we're going two that, and a half hours. But it might, which is fine. I got, uh, you know, I'm, I'm here, so let's do it. I, I just, it would be fun. I've never seen a format like this where, what if photographers of all skill levels just sent in pictures yeah. and then could call or Skype and say, this is how I shot this, this is where I was, this is how I set up the light and the lens I use and... And stuff like that. So that's my uh, that's my theory. So I guess we'll uh, we'll see uh, see what happens. All right, um, Ronnie, are we getting the first guy on the line? Looks like he's on there. Okay, uh, I'm looking for Richard Polk. Uh, Richard, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. All right, we need a little more playback in the studio, Ronnie. I'm not hearing anything. Um, Richard, hang I'm on. Here. Let's get a little more uh, volume on the playback here. Yeah, have him talk a little bit. yeah say it, it's I, I think on the the speakers here inside the studio, Ronnie. Can you say something to us, Richard? Yeah. Okay. I'm here. There you uh, go. I can hear him fine. All right. I I got you. All right, Richard. You sent us a, a few pictures here. Um, yeah. Tell us a little bit about you know your whole watch collecting experience and you know when did you start shooting watches? What do you like to do? Go ahead. So I I've been collecting for quite a few years now, but I just started taking pictures when I got you know when I started going to Watch Geeks and. Uh, seeing everybody else's pictures and I got a little uh, Kodak Easy Share Max Z990 camera. Mm-hmm. It's basically just a point and shoot. Yeah. And uh, most of my photography is taken outside. I don't do the light boxes. I, I haven't had much luck with those. Is there um, is that the only reason that you're shooting outside versus inside, or is there an advantage to you as a uh, photographer that you like? Do you like the light better, or it's just easier? How did you uh, make that decision? I think well, when I take the pictures inside, they seem to be really grainy. Mm-hmm. Okay. And the outside light with with the autofocus just does great. Ronnie, do we have any of Richard's pictures uh, that we can show? There we go. Okay, wow. What is now? This what is that? Was brand? that a uh, reactor? reactor? 
Does that sound uh, right I, to I you? I don't see it yet, but is that your is that your picture, uh, Richard? All I see is my picture up there, my myself, not the watch yet. Oh, you don't have uh, it, a. Uh, it'll be up in a second. Oh, maybe he doesn't have a separate internet connection where he can see the. Uh, the video. Anyway, it's a reactor. Is that your watch, Richard? Yeah, I got I got reactors. Yeah, that's actually a nice picture, Tim. Yeah, it it is. I mean, one of the things that strikes me, and that's I'm I'm assuming then, uh, Richard, that was taken outside. Yeah. Yeah, because one yeah. of the things that strikes me on this immediately is how very even the uh, the light is. So maybe we could talk a little bit to um, how you went about lighting that in an outdoor situation. Well, I got a screened-in porch, and I got a table like in the middle of it, and there's a black. I lay a black. Uh, it's like a placemat down on the ground. Maybe that has something to do with the the lighting, the way it captures it, but. And you just, I just turn it till I get the right light, you know. So it's it's a matter of just of, of patience, and it sounds like you're using kind of a, a diffused light by shooting on in, in the porch area. Yeah, yeah. It's not direct. Yeah, no, I yeah, I I kind of picked up on that. So one of the reasons I asked the the question is because that lighting, uh, it's it's a very flattering, uh, even lighting. We got any yeah, other I, pictures I, from Richard? All right, here's an Invicta with an orange dial. Very tight on the dial. And that, when I do those, it's I use uh, Picasso 3. What's that? Uh, and, which is what, Richard? That's it's like a, uh, I don't know, how do I put it? It's like an image host, like. I'll take the picture, I'll download it to the computer, I'll, I'll put it up on Picasso 3, and then I can edit it. Okay, so it's um, it, it's kind of like, uh, it, it's a, a digital uh, editing software, like a Photoshop kind of yeah, a thing. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Well, so nice. what, what, is this, what is the technique that you like that uh, Picasso does? I like the fact you can crop, you got a couple other, you know, like if there's a piece of dust on the lens or something, you could wipe it out by mm -hmm. using their, their little tricks in there. Yeah, okay. Um, so it, you kind of kind of clean it up. We went back to, uh, I think, another uh, reactor shot here, uh, which um, actually, composition-wise, this is interesting because it looks like you've chosen a background of uh, what, at least in, in the small shot I'm seeing, it appears to be like a steel mesh, and then it, it uh, matches uh, what looks like the uh, kind of a knurling texture that's on the bezel of the watch. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That that's uh that's that place mat flipped upside down. <laughs> okay, so that's not a happy accident. You you did that on purpose. Yeah, it it kind of Well, very nicely done, uh Richard. I you want to is there any more shots of his in there? Oh, he's got several in there. What did you send uh, us your whole uh quite... your whole bag of what, pics, pictures there? No, you sent a lot in, I think. <laughs> No, yeah, only about I, eight. I, I, I took eight. That's oh, this is what I liked on his. The loom shot. Now you did this uh, the the loom shot with a, a point and shoot camera. Right, and that I that I did in uh, well, I kind of I went in the bathroom, shut the door, no light, and had the camera up on a uh, tripod. Mm hmm And put the timer on, you know, like two or ten seconds. I forget what it was, and just let her go. You know, charged it up with. Um, I see the uh, Invicta watch now, but I, I uh, charge it up with uh, some kind of flat. Uh, it's not a regular like flashlight. It's a different kind of flashlight. I forget how. Is it, it like um, the, like an LED light, or are you using a black light or something like that? Yeah, it's it's kind of like it. It kind of has UV rays, I guess. The flashlight, mm -hmm. kind of like a military type thing. Okay. Yeah. All right. That that makes that makes sense. Uh, now, is that the only flashlight you had, or is that uh, something you choose on purpose because the uh, the loom material material uh, reacts to it? No, actually, I got that for something else to, to to see the stains in the carpet, and I used it once on on the loom shot, and it's like, wow, this is <laughs> the way it charges it up is great. So sure. That's what I use now. 
So it sounds like you, you've kind of cobbled together your shots from picking up um, uh, situations around your, your home then with a, a indirect lighting on a porch and then a, a, a flashlight bought for one purpose that, that's now uh, applied here. Yeah, just playing around with the camera and Wait. different effects mm. and stuff like that. Richard, can I I'm make a, a suggestion to you? What's that? Okay. I think your pictures are nice, but get a new headshot, would you? <laughs> that's my old work ID. <laughs> okay, you know I like to make jokes. That's all. I'm just ki I'm kidding around. That's all right. Yeah, uh, but anyway, uh, you sent a nice batch of shots in here, and uh, we picked you to go first. Now you're in uh, Kernersville, North Carolina. Right. Yeah, we're trying to knock out kind of the Eastern time zones first, but uh, uh, no, I'm not usually up this late anyway. But. Tim, w let me. I want to kind of end every guy. With uh, if he could give share one tip, you know, I mean, you've been shooting watches for a long time. What would be your one tip that you would share? Oh, what's the most important thing to you when you're doing your shots? Just to get it the clarity right. Okay, the focus. Nice clean, nice clean shot. Yeah, focus exactly. Okay. Okay. Cool. I mean, this is all Greek to me because I've never toyed around with it. But yeah, uh, that's that's actually pretty sage advice. You know, because uh, I want to start playing around with it. I've got mm -hmm. some space in downstairs, as you see, yeah. to set something up down there. But um, that's, that's, it's interesting once you get going on it. Yeah. So every time you buy a new watch, do you start shooting it every single time? Yep. And then what I do is I put it on a flash drive, and that way, for insurance purposes, if anything ever should happen. All right. Good point, too. Well, fantastic, Richard. Again, I want to say thank you so much for participating in the show tonight. And, well, um, you guys. Absolutely. You guys do a great job. Thank well, you. Thank you so much. And hang around because we got more guys coming up that are going to, you know, share some tips. And, you know, Tim, I got a surprise for you. I didn't even tell you about it, but uh, I've got a professional photographer calling in tonight. Excellent. Okay, so that, that's going to be fun. But hey, anyway. Can I ask one yeah, thing? Absolutely. Sure. Fire away. Is there any chance that one day we can get Ginger to come out and show herself? Uh, actually, yes. <laughs> yes, we'll get Ginger to come out. Maybe, uh, I don't know about tonight, because it's pretty busy out there. I don't like to leave it that way. But, you know, maybe the next show. Maybe we'll get yeah, Ginger to, we might get her to stick yeah, her we'll head. We'll see. We might get her to stick her head in here tonight, maybe a little bit later, okay? All right, thanks. Okay. Sure. Take we're, care, guys. We're actually, pla we're actually planning something for Ginger, okay? So uh, just hang tight, and you're going to see lots of Ginger, okay? All right. Take care now. Thanks, Thanks Richard. Thanks. Okay. What a question. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see that one coming. I know. I have to admit. I'm telling you. All right. So uh, while Tim and I fill a little time here, uh, let's go ahead, Ronnie, and, and let's go for the next guy. We're going to just try and knock him out. Um, so, okay, you know, Richard's thing is all about focus. Mm -hmm. See, what everybody tells me is it's the lighting, the lighting, the lighting, the lighting. That's all I always hear is the lighting. Well, the lighting is 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 key, and then that, of course, as you know, it's it's an art unto itself. And uh, lighting, of, of course, is everything to do with photography. So it's true if I'm like if I'm out shooting with Nat Geo or whatever okay. I'm doing. I mean, you're still very conscious of where the sun is. Or right. It's diffused. I mean, lighting's the story. Macro okay. photography is a whole another uh, art form because now. Instead of shooting, you know, like this massive area, uh, a lot of times your total focus can be within like a couple inches square or something like that. So it, it is really different. And so how does the the light uh, react? And and um, I, I brought, as you know, I brought in a, you know a few of mine. I'll show you, you know how this is how I do it. And right. but I, what I want to do is let's get some of these other guys. But to his point, yeah, lighting is is really key. Um, one of the things if I could just like in general, like what I think some from experience one of the most important and difficult things in macro photography is getting the watch really clean mm -hmm. as in get yourself a uh, like a, a power blower and uh, there's a a couple of the photo companies even make them now that are uh, balloons where basically you can uh, blow very very hard air and very it's actually filtered air within these these bladders on a watch or whatever you're shooting and it helps uh, clean them up a great deal and makes post production easier all right I think we have our next uh, photographer on the line, and it's Rick. T is it Tomasic? Tomasic? Yeah, that's it. Rick Tomasic. Hey guys. Hi, hey, Rick. How you doing? You're in uh, Port Charlotte, Florida. 
Or Charlotte, Florida, yeah. Well, nice well here. welcome to the show, Rick. Oh, thank you. Nice talking to you again. Yeah, absolutely. Now, Rick, we've got two pictures from you. Yeah. Okay. I said four, so. Yeah, but only two made the cut. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Which I had nothing to do with, by the way. Yeah, but... Um, yeah, thanks for throwing me under the bus there, Tim, but that's okay. Yeah. No, the no, thing is this. One of us had to do it. No, the thing is this. You know, we tried to get a variety of shots. We tried to take yeah. your best shots. And, frankly, I, I thought this was your best shot, Rick, uh, this, uh, you know, where you showed the whole package inside the box. And I love these Invicta boxes. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that, that, that was my Christmas present. I didn't think I was getting that, but my wife really surprised me. Well, congratulations. That's a, that's a beautiful set. Oh, that, that, that's a gorgeous watch. So, uh, as you know, as we take a look at the at the, uh, at the shot, we can obviously see that you put the watch inside the box and so on. Um, what was the uh, what's the camera? What's the basic gear when you're you're setting up for a shot? Uh, actually, um, I just started collecting. I, I met you guys uh, on Shop NBC uh, right after Basel last year. Yeah, and, sure. Um, uh, my first watch um, was the the Koifman. Um, I, I mm -hmm. like the idea of the automatic watches. I, mean, I hadn't personally seen them in a long time. Right. And the first one I had gotten was um, that Koifman, and the second was the one that's on the screen now. I really love that one, that, that um, Omega uh, Delphi. That, yeah, that, yeah, that's the, the, really the, the, the nice Sterling one. piece. Yeah, that, that's a gorgeous watch. I had a lot of compliments on that one. So, Rick, I, I want to steer you back to, to the original question. Uh, so what for, for basic gear, what, what camera do you like? Um, actually, um, my, my favorite camera, I had a, um, an Olympus, mm -hmm. and it lost it on vacation. What I used on that was just a simple um, Sony Cyber Sure Shot. Yeah. Just a small okay. little digital camera. Yeah. And um, I, I set a draping over my laptop, and the little pillow comes from my, uh, my watch case. So I balanced it, and... Uh, Got a little side lighting from outside. That's the only lighting was coming through the window. Okay, so it's going. To, so you're shooting indoors, but you're using sunlight. Right. Yeah, from the left. The light was coming in from the left. So are you using? Um, like, are you drawing like a, a drape of some kind across? Is the is the window uh, open or? Uh, no, the window is just wide wide open. Plenty of light coming in, mm -hmm. and uh, that's that's how it turned out. I was really kind of surprised at it, that it, it turned out good. Some of them I was a little too close. They got a little blurry. Um, but that, a bunch of them, they, they really turned out good. Like the last guy said, basically I um, uh, did it just in case for insurance. Sure. And um, on Watch Geeks and um, all the rest of them, Watch of the Day, mm -hmm. um, I've been having a blast. Good. This past year has is, is been great for watches for me. What's so. your name on Watch Geeks, Rick? Um, it's just Ricky. Okay. I mean, I'm not on Geeks enough. I, I go there, but I, I don't recognize the, the moniker Ricky. R-I-C-K-Y? Yeah, R-I-K-K-I. R-I-K-K-I. Okay. Yeah. Well, again, Rick, I want to thank you very much for participating. And, uh, you know, keep keep on, you yeah, know. keep shooting, man. Keep shooting, keep improving on your techniques, man. Uh, thanks a lot, guys. It was oh, nice but, talking to you. And, okay. and before we let you go, uh, we'd like a tip from uh, right. from everyone that participates. So, uh, thank to you. somebody that's a, a beginner, um, like, w what's a tip that you wish you knew earlier on in in shooting that you've learned now? Real still. You, you, if you're going to be holding a camera, it's we got to be real still. Real. It's uh, almost like shooting a gun. You got to get your breathing and get that click just right and no motion in the camera, and then the, the picture comes out nice and clear. Like I said, it's just a simple digital, but I thought the pictures turned out nice. All right. Yeah, they did, and thank you for sharing. Great tip. Thank you so much. Excellent. Thank okay, you. Okay, guys. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thanks, hey. Rick. And you. Hey, you know, by the way, let me just say this, too, is that, you know, he, he mentioned he sent four, we showed two. Almost everybody that sent in pictures, we didn't pull all their pictures, you know. Mm -hmm. Even the gentleman, uh, Richard, who had eight, he probably sent us... 12 or 14 so you know i want everybody want them to want you to know we uh we kind of tried to weed it down otherwise we would have had over 250 pictures tonight as it is we're going to have probably close to 100 yeah
So, yeah, so uh, thanks for being along for the ride, guys, and uh, and thank you for participating. Um, a lot of you have been very kind and have uh, reached out to myself on uh, on, on Facebook, and uh, I've been looking forward to uh, you know seeing what happens tonight because we're out here with uh, not so much a script, but we're uh, relying on you guys. So thank you, we appreciate it. Awesome, awesome. Uh, okay, so now we're the next one we're going to do. Looks like he has a you know because what I did, Tim, is I actually asked people. Uh, if you have a video Skype capability, give us your video Skype name. And um, this next gentleman, Alan Nasanovsky, uh, on uh, Watch Geeks is known as uh, uh, Anas. And uh, I'm, I'm being nice here. But anyway, I, I, <laughs> no, but I have known Alan now for a few years. I've seen him at different Watch Geek get togethers. In fact, uh, he came to that national one in Minnesota a couple years ago. Mm -hmm. And uh, Alan and I, I pulled him uh, aside, and, and we got some pictures uh, behind the scenes over at Shop NBC, which yeah, was cool. at 3 in the morning. And we even have some of those here, I think. But uh, actually, I don't have any of those. I think Alan has them. But um, anyway, Alan, are you with us? I'm here. Hey, Alan. Okay. But where's the video? It's just a still picture. Um, I got a call on my cell phone, not on my Skype. Oh, so can we can we request to add Adam? I did, yeah. Oh, so what, he didn't approve us. Not yet, I guess, so. Oh, you have we we requested to add for you to add us to your Skype, and you haven't approved us, Alan. Can you okay. can, can you approve us or something? Well, let's we'll re or else, Alan, if you want, you can call into us. But no, we'll, I want to get the Skype going, man. All right, let's do Skype. Because we don't we don't have that many. <laughs> if you approve us, we'll call you right back, and then we'll you, we can get your video on here. Okay. All right, do you see the uh, Do you see the request there, Alan? Do you see the request there, Alan? No, I do not. But I'm going to look for it. Um, no, I do not. But I'm going to look for it. All right, maybe when we hang up. Okay. All right, we're, let, let's hang up and let's try and reconnect. Okay. Because we only have a few guys that gave us video Skypes, and I, I'd like to, you know, use the technology yeah, we if we okay, can. Okay, well, why don't we set up Alan, and we'll, uh, we'll, we'll get right back. Yeah, so we're going to try and do Alan again. We'll yeah. try to request. And while we're doing that, uh, you know, maybe we can. I know Alan takes lots of pictures. I mean, mm -hmm. the first oh, thing yeah. I noticed when I w met him at a watch gig get-together, he had the tripod setting up, and he was like the official photographer. And, you know, nobody pays him to do that. He just does it on his own, and everybody loves his pictures. He really does... Uh, you know, request. Uh, there's Big Alan. I'm glad we did that. Thank you, Ronnie. Hey, there he is. Hey, guys. Uh, yeah, except yeah. I see we have to, our thing is reversed there, Ronnie. But check him out. There's Big Alan. <laughs> Big Al, what up? Nicely, nice to see you. Boy, that chair is perfect for you, Al. Yes, it is. It's it's probably bigger than it looks. <laughs> because I, I know you're a big, big man, so I, I know how big that chair must be. This is one of those custom order jobs. Awesome, awesome. Well, Alan, uh, t first let me start with this. Before we even get into the whole watch thing, the first time I met you, you were setting up tripods and pictures and stuff. Have you always been a photographer, or you've been in it a long time, or where did that all come from? Uh, I did a lot of video with the olden day camcorder stuff, and then once digital became new age technology and very affordable, I switched over to that. Okay. So how long ago was that? Um, probably about six, seven years now. Okay. And did you start with shooting watches, or were you shooting, you know, outdoors, events, or what? Uh, no, pretty much everything. I've always been looking for my niche in life. Yeah, me too. <laughs> you know? All right. Well, uh, how many different times? I mean, how, and I know you've taken lots of wrist shots. I've been at these watch geek get-togethers, and you actually ask people, I'm going to take a wrist shot. Give me your wrist. Uh, but, you know, how long have you been shooting the watches? Uh, probably about four years now. Okay. So when I asked you to send me some of your best, I mean, you probably had hundreds to choose from, right? Um, I have three or four external hard drives. So they're one terabyte <laughs> unit each. Okay. So that's like four, four, four and a half terabytes worth of pictures to dig wow. through. Wow. Okay. Wow. So right. have you saved every photo you've ever done, or do you actually go through and cull the herd once in a while? Uh, very rarely do I get to cull the herd. They're just, I put them away. Cool. They just get another, get another external hard drive and add more. Dig it. Well, here's a nice shot of a Renato. 
Now, what is that on? Is that on carpet or what? What is that? Uh, no, that's a uh, little piece of fuzzy foam to give a texture look. So, um, since you've obviously got uh, some experience, I want to... Um uh, talk a, a little bit more extensively. Like, for, let's take this shot. It's a great example. Um, what was the thought process? How did you arrive at the uh, at the composition on that? Well, the biggest thing I was looking for that was to show the Orient and the Mother of Pearl on the dial. That was the biggest concern, mm -hmm. and everything else came second. So, I kept moving the watch around. I, you know, I tried zooming in really close and then backing up, and that got the uh, the Orient to show through the best looking at that way. Plus you also see the bezel and you can see it's a wristwatch. So in the course of capturing the, uh, the, 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 the mother of pearl, I mean, one of the questions that, that I would have, I think uh, a lot of aspiring photographers have is how did you get the crystal uh, so clear on that shot? Um, it, big thing we talked about earlier with one of the callers is clean cleanliness. Always clean your watches and your crystals ahead of time before you start taking any photos whatsoever. Okay, we're back up. Uh, let me see it come back online here. Let me apologize here once we come back up. Hang on, everybody. We're, our viewership is rolling. Hang in there, Alan. All right, listen, guys, we're back. We lost the feed for a few minutes here. Um, maybe we're, we're doing a little too much technology here. So thank you for bearing <laughs> with us here. Uh, look at this, Tim. We actually gained some viewers during I that. I know. I don't know if they'll read anything into that or not. Yeah, so we I actually gained a few viewers when we just crashed here for you know, a minute. I, I begged you to go Mac. But, yeah, you know, that's true. That's, that's true. Like, but you did it after I just bought a new PC. That's, that's yeah. also true. You know, <laughs> I wish I would have done it. But, anyway, uh, listen, I just want to thank you all for hanging in there. And, Ronnie, i got to tell you, I've been, lived through some of these crashes back in New York and uh, on the Vid Blaster, and I'll tell you, uh, it usually takes about three minutes to get back. I think we were only down for about a minute. Okay, or less. Or so that, less, exactly. That was pretty quick, so good job, Ronnie. All right, sorry to interrupt there, uh, Big Al. We, we actually lost the feed for a minute. So That's okay. All right. So you were, so um, could you go ahead and, and let, let me let me ask you the question again uh, for the benefit of, of anyone aspiring to shoot uh, watches. How did you get that uh, that watch crystal so clean? Um, as you had addressed earlier with uh, one of the other callers, to uh, the big thing for me, anyways, is to clean the watch ahead of time and you get all the fingerprints and the dust off before you even start taking any photos whatsoever. How do you do that? That's a huge tip. Right? That is a huge tip. I myself, um, a there's a lot of like uh, eyeglass companies that make uh, these things called lens wipes. Mm -hmm. I uh, I use those for the crystals. And the watches. I mean, I do not, I cannot tell you or uh, address whether it takes any plating off of any watches, but it never has for me. Okay. But I use those. Let's see if we have another. The Renato looks nice. What else we got from Alan? An Invicta. Okay, here's a close up, uh, Alan. I know you may be in a bit of a lag there. It's an Invicta. Uh, looks like a double rotor big date with a green dial. Just so that we're on the on the talking about the uh, the same shot, um, I want to go back and ask a basic uh, uh, question. Uh, what gear are you using uh, when you're getting in on these macros? Um, that would be I would be here using a uh, camera, Canon 50D, mm -hmm. with a uh, well, obviously not this lens. This is yeah, a I was going to say that's a interesting strange. choice of lenses for macro work. Yes. Yes, I use a 100 millimeter macro. Mhm. Mm and that's a is that that's a fixed 100 millimeter? Correct. Yeah. With okay. Focus. Yeah. No, it, it's not the newer one with the uh, IS built in. It's the old style. Okay. Um, one of the other biggest things I can talk about macro work. When whenever you're talking macro work, the biggest thing that you're ever going to want, for for me, I found a little teeny micro tripod. Nice. Yep. I've I've gone through. I actually own seven, eight different tripods, and this is my one of the newest ones. It's my favorite because I can use it on a tabletop. Is that, is that why you prefer the smaller ones? Is is it will fit on a table, whereas the big ones obviously don't. Yes, where I've got other you know uh, tripods. You know, I could set up you know seven feet off the ground, and then a table is still only four feet off the ground. Now I'm taking up a huge gigantic room. 
with this gigantic tri tripod spread out. It, it's just a lot of stuff for not needed. All right. What else we got from Al? We got a, I've got a few shots from him, don't no, we? I want to um, well go ahead and set up another shot. But Alan, and sent, I was reminded of this when we uh, we saw that uh, that beautiful green shot with the double rotor. Um, what's your take on on using f stops? What do you think? Uh, I like to play around with them, try them out, mm -hmm. see which one works the best. I mean, watch photography doesn't have to get that serious for me. It's still fun. What's an f stop, guys? Um, that's a great question from, from Larry. An f-stop, uh, for those who don't know, it's the, think of it as the iris of your eye, and in photography it's called an f-stop, and you change that on your lens, and the lar the smaller the number, let, let's say like an f-4 or something, and they can go much smaller than that, very expensive lenses will do like a 1.8, but th those are very, very wide apertures, and they l allow a great deal of light in. And then you can go to the other extreme, do like an F22, F32, F45. I've got one. I think it'll do an F46. Um, and they go to very, very small. So, Alan, you just you just mix it up. You don't have a go-to. Correct. Uh, the, the, I also say this picture that we're looking at now, this is the Renato watch we showed earlier two pictures ago in the dark. Okay. And how did you go about doing the uh, uh, the loom shots? Uh, this, uh, I think I just repositioned the watch up and down, and it was still inside my little, uh, light tent, and I just turned the lights off. Um, do you, do you have a favorite, uh, f-stop or settings for your time exposures? No, that, it really can, uh, vary, especially when I'm doing loom shots. Even more vary, depending on the angle of the watch. Do you have a favorite ASA? No, I, I'm very, So very you just, you literally just mix it up always. Yeah, I, I don't want to say I've got a standard for anything. You know, cool. life doesn't work that way for me. Cool. So basically, uh, just just you're just mixing it up. That's it. And you'll eventually find your groove and go with it. Cool. So if we were to ask you, uh, now, did we get through all of his shots that we had in the uh, folder? Yep. Did we? Okay. Okay. Uh, I think I know the answer, but if, if you gave one, you know, uh, tip of the night from Alan Nasanovsky... I think you already gave it, but what would it be? Um, have fun with it. Enjoy it. Once it becomes stressful, it's not fun anymore, and it, it's going to scare everybody away, and nobody's ever going to do it again. So keep it fun. Well, I liked your tip about clean the darn watch. I mean, because I, you know, I tell you what, man. I, you know, at Sterling Original, I've used several photographers, and it's it's just you can save so much effort and work in just photoshopping and everything else by just cleaning the darn thing. Mm-hmm. That makes a big difference. I, I thought that was a great tip, man. It seems obvious, but... No, it, it's a huge tip. I agree with you. It's Can I also tip. say something that, believe it or not, I'm actually a hardcore purist. I do not believe in anything post-production. So those well, are, that's all raw out of the camera. Yes. Well, yeah, but I mean, like I, I'm not even talking about enhancing anything, but I mean, if you want to just crop something or, you know, sometimes for cropping or resizing, you know. Well, cropping is one thing that, that, that needs to be done. Yeah. Depending on where it's for, but there's no there's, if there's a fingerprint, the photo just doesn't get used. I go well, back and clean it. Yeah, but what about for example, with um, you know you you want to stop your second hand, so you pull the crown out, right? Correct. Okay, don't you in Photoshop want to go cut it and put it back in? Um, no, it's it is what it is. You like seeing the picture with the crown pulled out? I just try and take photographs where it doesn't emphasize the crown. Yeah, I, it makes total sense. Yeah, that's cool. I mean, I always like seeing the crown pushed back in, and a lot of times the you know photographers, you know, you, when you're paying guys to take pictures, they pull the crown out, and then in Photoshop they cut it and stick it back in. I, yeah, I think I, I don't think that's which is true. I don't think that's cheating too much. No, I'm not saying it's cheating. I'm just saying that's how I do. No, it's just a yeah. different technique. No, I, Alan, I totally, uh, totally get it, man. If you're if you're a purist, you are capturing that exact moment at that exact lighting, and then you publish it. I don't think that's true. Very, yeah, very, totally get it. Very organic. Hey, Alan, before we let you go, you know, I, it's been a while since I've seen you in person since I had to move out here, uh, but. Uh, you got anything for me or Tim? A qu other, even if it's outside the photography uh, realm, just any questions or anything? Um, uh, I hate to even bring up watches that we're kind of doing <laughs> cameras and stuff, but uh, anything new from Sterling coming out? Yeah, yeah. There's a lot. As a matter of fact, um, 
you know, everybody's been waiting a long time for Sterling Prestige. And uh, it looks like uh, Valentine's Day is going to be the day. So, oh, very uh, cool. you know, that's going to be huge. We're going Swiss made, Valju 7750s. And, um, you know, it's been a long time coming. But that's, that's going to be pretty big for us. Sterling Prestige. And then even just on the Sterling Original side, you know, um, you know, some of you may remember, well, going back to Prestige for a second, some of you may remember uh, our Ocean Maverick, which was phenomenal. Now we've got a new uh, Ocean Maverick that's a 47 instead of a 53, and it's got the 7750 in it. So a new Maverick, Sterling, a Prestige Maverick with a 7750, I think that's going to be really hot. So, I mean, I appreciate the question. Thank you. I mean, you know, that's another thing, too. You're taking pictures of all these watches, but you're buying a lot of watches, too. Yes. <laughs> They're starting to add up. Yeah. <laughs> Just starting to add up? Would you say you have over 100 watches? Um, let me look, see if my wife's around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's true, over 100. I think we're, we're a li- over 100 and a half already. Is that right? Wow, wow. That's pretty cool, man. All right, Alan. Well, listen, man, it's been a long time, and, um, you know, uh, I will never forget when we went into 3 in the morning to, uh, to, to the shop and we got some nice pictures behind the scenes. Do you remember well, that? that was a great time. Yes, I do remember that. It was like yesterday. I, I, I think I pulled you out of bed. I said, come on, man, get your camera and let's go. That was a once-in-a-lifetime chance for me. That was awesome. That was awesome. And, you know, nobody could, could you know, even hear us. I mean, we're two 300-pound guys tiptoeing in there. I'm not quite 300 yet, but I'm getting close. <laughs> We're tiptoeing around the studio, you know, like don't let anybody see us. That was pretty funny. All right, listen, Alan, thanks again. Uh, thank you so much for participating, and I uh, hope to see you soon. Oh, yeah, same here. Good to see you, Tim, too. Hey, thank you, Alan. Uh, you've been terrific. Thank you for the tips, man. We appreciate right. it. You're welcome. Thanks, guys. All thank right, you. Man. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Well, he's, he's take, he takes lots of pictures. I yeah, mean, if that we, guy can shoot. It, it, there's no question, and if we would have – taking you know pictures from outside of uh before you go, oh, go to the next guy ronnie give it a second here um oh you're going to request a friendship deal okay good job um uh if we would have opened it up just photography whatever i mean alan has all kinds of shots from all the different road trips he's done with all these watch geek get-togethers and they yeah. seem to have a lot of them up there in the northeast you know yeah they that's like every couple three weeks or something they've got yeah uh, you know it, it, it's boston or new england or jersey new york uh, yeah i've got to get up there. i want to see this year maybe if i can uh, uh do a couple of those yeah that's so, true i mean uh, you're always uh going to other countries yeah yeah well, <laughs> yeah, well there's basel so i'll be doing that and you know, then uh looks like we've got uh so far this year also uh hong oh, kong and thailand so yeah now are you actually getting him on the phone already ronnie you already got him yeah, bob i wanted to actually take a look at some of tim's but all right or do another call out but all right, we'll we got bob and then we'll look at some stuff all right fine uh big bob from new york are you uh, are you with us i'm here larry Okay. Hey, Tim. Hey. All right. Did you, did you happen to catch that last segment with uh, with Alan? <laughs> yes, I haven't seen Alan in a long time. You know, I'm so glad that we we called him back because uh, it was worth it to get him on video yeah, Skype. No, no doubt. Yeah. You know. Um, okay. So, Bob. You know, you and I have gotten to know each other. You've been a, a real good friend of Sterling. Uh, you live. Uh, well, I can't say within a stone's throw of Sterling, but you live pretty pretty darn close. I think you're within 10 miles of the Sterling headquarters. Yeah, it's only about maybe 15 minutes by car, Larry. Yeah, and Bob lives in one of my favorite places in New York, Sheep's Head Bay. Do you know Sheep's Head Bay? We went out to Sheep's Head Bay oh, you and I... because we went to the sandwich shop. Yeah, and, and Bob lives a block away from that oh, shop. There we go. Uh-oh, Rollin' Roaster. Rollin' Roaster, man, yeah. one of my favorite spots in New York. Um you know, they they should have a, a national chain of these things. I mean, the place has been there for like 30 years, and they make roast beef sandwiches. And the place, I mean, there's always a, a line. You can't get in there. You can't get a parking spot. The place is phenomenal. I love that spot. If I if I lived there I would, right where you do, I'd probably be over 300 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> Larry, they've been running commercials on TV lately that go back to uh, must be the late 70s, early early uh, 80s. If you take a look at the costumes and the hairdos, you, you would, you'd, you'd be laughing your head off if you saw them. But, you know, it's not just the roast beef sandwiches there. Everything is good. They got, you know, they got the yams. 
They got in a fast food place. They, they got they have yams. They right. They do. They I do. Mean, I don't care for them personally, but oh, I man. can vouch for their presence. They got fresh lemonade. They know from yams. They got pies and oh, oh that God. picture looks like a mug shot off the post office wall. <laughs> well, listen, you sent it in. Yeah, I know. I know. <laughs> You sent My it mistake. in. I won't make that a mistake again. All right. Well, you know, um, I think you said you had video Skype, but at this hour of the night, you really didn't want to use it this late at night because you got people sleeping in the house and everything. I'm in my bedroom, and my wife is over my shoulder, fast asleep, and I hope that no one hears her snoring. Okay. <laughs> All right. Well, you know, Bob, you've taken some really nice shots over over the years, and, uh, uh, you know, I'm glad you, you know, decided to participate in the show. Absolutely. And you know, Thanks so, for the invitation. I appreciate it. Absolutely. And, you know, sometimes it's not just about, you know, the, the tightness on the watch and all that. It's about the staging. Uh, here we have, is this a sunrise or a sunset? There's got to be a sunset. Uh, which, no, that's a sunrise. Okay. Wow. That's a sunrise. That, uh, people would have a hard time believing that this is in the confines of one of the five boroughs of New York City in Brooklyn, and I walked to this spot from my house. Is that on, on the side where the Kingsboro Community College is, or? Uh, it's actually, Larry, right at the Knapp Street exit off the Bell Parkway, across Sheepshead Bay from Kingsboro Community College, Manhattan Beach, actually. Mm-hmm. Right, you can walk there, yeah. Yep, I can walk there, and, and I just happened to, I was taking some pictures with this Russian loom diver, and I was walking along the beach and taking some pictures where I had the watch down in the sand, and I spotted this driftwood sticking up, and all I did was just simply stick the watch on the top of the driftwood, get the shot lined up where the sun was coming through on, a, on, a, on, a, on, the, on the sunrise, and then I had to put my flash on because when you have backlit subjects like this, what would happen is if I didn't turn the flash on to light up that watch, what you'd have is the watch in total darkness practically where you wouldn't be able to read the, uh, the time on it. So by putting the flash on, it lights up any subject that's lit from the back. All right, and uh, Tim, you want to ask him about his yeah, camera? Yeah, I, I do actually. Uh, well, first of all, uh, what, what camera do, are, are we using here in these shots? Uh, Tim, I have oh, a I very simple... Shot. I have a very simple Canon power shot that my wife Nikki bought me uh, in an electronic store about two months ago. The camera cost one hundred and forty nine dollars okay and is that are you using the separate flash pack or the like a flip top or nope nope it's a built in flash uh, it's a point and shoot camera Tim okay it's a point and shoot camera yep okay so um, I know we moved on off the shot, but I'm going to ask you about that fill flash. Do you have a, a tip or a, a, anything on on your technique for using fill flash? Uh, no, not really. You know, it's one of these I things where, that. like Larry, uh, excuse me, like Alan had basically said, you have to play around a little bit, and you get to learn after a while what works in certain shots. And and once you learn from your mistakes, then all you do is just simply remember. Here's you know, here's another shot where again you've got the subject kind of backlit. This is in the morning, but it's a cloudy day. Where if I didn't throw the flash on, you wouldn't be able to read the dial on 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 that uh, Invictus Subaquanoma. So how how many shots did you do before you arrived at that one? Only a couple. That was that that, that believe it or not was taken around Christmas time in 2010, and I just was wandering along the beach. And uh, in fact, this is an older camera that I had where I really couldn't see what I was shooting. It had a very very oh, small wow. window. Yeah. And I was very very lucky. In fact, the camera before this Canon that I had, Nikki bought me a Sony CyberShot because the camera I took the shot with was an old Pentax water-resistant camera where the, mo the monitor on the back was only about an inch and a half square. It was really hard in the sunshine mm -hmm. or any other kind of condition to see the picture you were taking. So this, this shot I took with that camera was actually just like flying blind. Hmm. It, it's a, I, I genuinely love that shot, man. It's a fantastic shot. I love the, uh, the sand across the watch. I, I think it's cool. This was one of Larry's favorites, and so was the one a couple of shots before where I actually put this watch in the water. Yeah, and I like I the one in the water. And I actually almost lost that watch because that was a wave coming in. I had to put the watch down, take the picture, and grab the watch before the watch went back out with the wave. And if I remember correctly, when I saw this, you actually posted the, this series of shots on Watch Geeks. And didn't you, write some kind, didn't you write some kind of a cutesy little story, too, like you and your watch went on a walk? Or, yeah, yeah. I, I, what I, what I did was, was I had a whole... Hell. I had a whole story about taking my subaquanoma to the beach, this particular watch, and this shot was in it, and this is the watch shot that I'm talking about where the watch almost got washed out to sea. There was that shot, 
the one that you just saw a few minutes ago of the watch on the beach. Then there was another watch shot with the in, in diver box on top of it. I did a whole pictorial on this watch. I, I try to look for things to do a little bit un, you know, unusual. People post their watches on Watch Geeks, and they do the usual run-of-the-mill wrist shots or something mm -hmm. like that. I tried with this watch to do something a little bit different. Is, uh, do you tend to do more of your work outdoors, or did you just happen to send that batch? Uh, I do most of my work outside. I'll even take my uh, watch of the day pictures, if the weather permits, outside. I, too, I do some pictures inside, but I like the lighting much better outside. I, I do Bringing it back. You know, <laughs> listen, this is about, I didn't count them, but I think this is our 13th or 14th <coughs> webcast in a row. And then if you count Jonathan's show, you know, you're adding in another We've done over 25 shows, and this is the first time, you know, that we've lost the stream, and now we've lost it twice in one show. I think it's because we're overloaded with all these pictures. Yeah. But anyway, Bobby... Which is a great problem to have, I think. I know, but <laughs> thank you, everybody, for hanging tough with us. Uh, if we lose the stream, just stay with us, because uh, we've got the system a little bit overloaded tonight. But um, it looks like we didn't lose the viewers. You guys are hanging tough. Bob, you still with us? I'm still here. Take it away, Tim. Okay, so uh, you, you mentioned you like uh, outdoors more than uh, than indoors. Have you shot indoors, or are you just are an outdoors guy, and that's what you do? I've shot indoors, Tim. I was about to say before the, the, the feed got lost that I have a, a about a $15 light kit I bought on Amazon. Mm -hmm. It's really a mini kit. It's, it's just for shooting jewelry and watches, yeah. and I do use that indoors. And I'll be honest with you, before you ask me if one of my tips are uh, for people at the end of the, the, the segment with me is you don't need to spend a lot of money. My camera was $150. The light box was maybe 20 That's $170. I don't have the, the money right now because I'm on disability to, to buy a setup, let's say, like Alan has. You know, I do mm -hmm. have a Nikon that's about 35 years old. That's 35 millimeter that I bought in the camera district in Manhattan and probably spent about $400 on, but that was about 35 or 40 years ago. I don't have that kind of money now. Right, so right. You don't need to spend a lot of money on fancy equipment. You just need a basic camera, learn how it works, learn the different settings, think about your shots, and, and have fun. That's sage advice, man. I, uh... it, it, it's, um, yeah, well, I'm going to ask you a question in a different way because uh, I... I... I'm asked this sometimes in photography. I'm also asked this as a as a musician once in a while, and so it's fun for me to to kind of turn the tables and ask people. Uh, when you first started doing macro photography, watch photography, what is something that you wish that you had been told on your first day? Was there like a gem like down the road that you you know you made a discovery and all of a sudden it was like, man, I wish I'd known that six months ago, kind of thing. Oh, Tim, that's a great question. I've got to think for a second or two. Uh, to be honest with you, for sure, it's, it's going back again to keeping the watches clean. I mean, I, I, I'm with I've you there. Rushed, yeah, I've rushed to get some watches up on Facebook and on Watch of the Day, and then I go and look, and the rubber straps, which are very difficult to clean, have fuzz on them. Yep. Uh, I've gotten brand new watches from Larry H. Durling and Invicta and G Shock and, and Renato and everybody else, and I've tore off the, the, the wrapper, I thought I wiped it down, I take a couple of pictures and there I see some lint on it. So I guess it comes back to keeping the watches clean, paying attention to detail, things like that, especially in the macro shots. I, I agree. You clean, uh, getting that watch clean, and again, I, you know, like I, I personally use one of those uh, uh, photography blowers uh, uh, a lot and uh, the, the wipes are great. Um, I, I agree. I mean, for those of you who haven't tried uh, photography in, in watches and you're thinking about getting into it, listen to these guys. They're giving you great advice. You can have a watch, and, and um, it, it's, it's Bob's telling you, um, you think it's clean, and then you look at, at, at when, when the shot blows up on your computer screen, and all of a sudden every little speck of dust and lint and whatever that you couldn't see with your eyes sitting right there. Hey Tim, let me ask you something. When yeah. you shoot, when you shoot watches that have the rubber straps, I yeah. mean, I've tried water, I've tried uh, dishwashing, I've tried everything under the sun to try to get them clean. What do you use? Okay, to shoot a, that's a, watch a great with question. A strap? Yeah, let's lay down some, you know, some tips from experience, and I'm sure the other uh, viewers will have tips as well. I'll tell you, how, this is how I do it, um, and uh, I think tonight in, in one of my collections, I, I can show you a uh, uh, one of the Russian pieces that was on a rubber strap that that looks pretty clean. Um, so, as I'm fond of saying, and I, I will footnote this material, I, I stole it from um, 
uh, Robert De Niro's uh, character in uh, Casino. There's the right way, the wrong way, and the way I do things. <laughs> and here's how I do it. I get one of those uh, wipes that you know, and I wipe it down as best as I can. And sometimes it, that ends up streaking if, you, if you've tried it. Um, uh, Tim, excuse me, are you talking about a photography type of wipe that Alan was talking about? Um, it's kind of like that, and sometimes I just use like those handy wipes that come in a, like those baby wipes and whatever, okay. keep a stack okay. of those around. I have those, yeah. Um, and, and so you wait till the alcohol dries, and then uh, another tip that I found is do that just before you start shooting, because at least in my environment, what I'm finding is if you let that watch sit for too long, that the lint and the dust just finds its way back onto it. I mean, not as bad, but it's still there. All right, that stated, um, this is where Alan and I are going to part ways. I'm a huge believer in post-production. Uh, I, I just am. Um, I live with Photoshop, and uh, I think purists are really cool, and Alan's a great shooter. But I can tell you from, uh, for those of you who don't know, I go out at least once a year with, uh, with Nat Geo, and, and I shoot with you know, some of the world-class guys that you, you're just in awe of to be around. And I'll tell you for a fact, every last one of those guys uses Photoshop, always. And so what I, and so back to your question, uh, what I do is I get it as clean as possible, then I look at how much is going to stay in the shot, because I'm not afraid the crop, so okay, and this is going to be the, you know, that's the kill shot. Right. Then anything left, I look at the clean part of the strap, and then what I do in Photoshop is I'm using what they call the rubber stamp, and I'm taking the clean part and I'm transposing it over the parts till, till <laughs> I can get rid of the dirt, and that's how I do it. Okay, it's kind of like cheating. All right. Yeah, some people think it's cheating, and uh, then I saw everybody I idolize in photography living with it. And they, well, it can't be. And he, actually, let's talk about this cheating thing for a bit because um, <laughs> I actually asked one of them about it, and he had a great comeback. Uh, which is, uh, for example, people that say uh, those of you that are, are film buffs, which I, I used to be, and I hope they keep making it for you, uh, that. Um, digital is not capturing in, in real life. Well, you know what? Neither is film. I grew up on film. I've been shooting since I was five. All right? Fuji has a look. Kodak has a look. Agfa has a look. None of them look like real life. All right? Fuji, for example, I love shooting Fuji Chrome. Velvia, Provia, that stuff pushes the green spectrum. If you're going to be shooting in South America, load yourself up on Provia. Uh, but it's not real life. Uh, it has its look. It has its advantage. And so it, the argument that, that film was captured in real life and digital did not uh, falls flat, I think. Um, I go for the clean look. And if you've got that strap as clean as you can and you can get it cleaner in post, I say do it. Because the only other option, you got two. One is publish it with lint. Like Alan, he wants to capture that moment exactly with the light. And he publishes as right. is. That's cool. Um, I go for a cleaner look, and if that means I got to get in there with, um, you know, the little rubber stamp thing and fix it, I'll I'll fix it. That's what I do. Okay. Um, Whatever works. Yeah, it it you know it works. So uh, it's um that that's my answer. Um, any uh I, I guess we've covered you for for tips and stuff like that. Anything else, Larry? No, Bob. You got anything for Tim or me off the uh, subject of uh, photography? Uh, no, not really. Not I mean, I, I, okay. Larry, I always enjoy chatting with you, Tim. This is the first time we're chatting. We've chatted on Facebook. We've yeah. talked about music. We've talked about watches. And it's always great to talk to both of you guys. I Thank wish we you, could man. talk more. Thank you, I appreciate more. that. Thanks a lot, Bob. Really appreciate your participation tonight and all your support, especially Very the much years. so. Thanks. Thank you. No problem, guys. Good Thanks, night. Bob. Have a great show. Thank okay. you. And you. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I think uh, what we ought to do now is we ought to at least get a second call out for the free gift. It's been uh, about an hour already. So uh, this will be an opportunity. Uh, we're giving away a nice pair of earrings tonight. Uh, it's um, a gift from uh, Porsamo Blue Jewelry. We had Mo Afshar in here a little bit earlier. He owns the company, and they made, the, they made their debut on Shop NBC a little earlier today. And we're giving away a nice pair of 21-carat uh, vermeil uh, Ver they call it Vermeil because it's gold over silver. Uh, drop earrings with uh, genuine sapphires. Uh, they're about half carators uh, in there. It's got a nice uh, retail value of about $190, and all you have to do to win it is send us an email to contact at acorn.tv. In the subject line, you're going to put the secret word for tonight. It's pinky. That's the secret word. 
I explained it earlier tonight. And then in the body of the email, you must put your first name, last name, city, and state. We don't need your address. We don't need your phone number right now. Just uh, first name, last name, city, and state in the body of the email, pinky in the subject line. You have five minutes now to send it in. And every time we make a call out, you get another chance at the drawing. And Ginger, you keep a track on that uh, so that um, after about five minutes, we're going to you know, cut it off. And then any ones that come in after that, you delete them. Okay. All right. And remember, uh, it's just one entry per person. Because if you, put in, you send in more than one in that five minutes, then they also get deleted too. Okay. All right. So that's for the uh, free gift. Now, before we go to our next photographer... You know, we have a little bit of, you know, other things here. We have, of course, the classic film zone, which we don't right. have to go to right now. And I'm going to make it try to kind of go a little short because, you know, Savvy Abby's computer crashed tonight. And that's a disappointment for all of us, not just you guys there. It's a disappointment for me, too. I like seeing Savvy Abby as part of our show as well. So, Abby, if you're watching, I hope that uh, you're going to be back up and running next week. All right. And if you're not watching, well, you should be watching. No, I'm kidding. Uh, and the other thing is... You know, before we go to our next photographer, by the way, the next one up is going to be Timothy Allen. So, Timothy, uh, uh, and his is, I think, pretty interesting. Get yeah. ready. Yeah, be ready. We're going to call you in a moment, <laughs> Timothy. But, you know, I thought maybe we should show a couple of shots of Tim's. And we don't have to sure. show all yours. We can kind of intersperse okay. a yeah. few of your throw shots. I think I think I I think I think I got like six or eight from you today or something. Something like that, yeah. I think you sent a couple in that were so late I couldn't get them in. But uh, maybe the last one or two. But, all right, let's see what you got here, Tim. Okay, uh, this one uh, will encompass a, 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 a few things that I, I want to talk about um, uh, very briefly. Um, one of them that it, it encompasses, and I, I uh, certainly a, a lot of the photographers we've talked to so far have, have kind of implied this as well, um, is you, you really should be messing around with the camera. And what I mean by that is not everything has to be right side up. Uh, this was actually done upside down to, at least to my mind, kind of give it the look of being suspended in space. And so how I set this up is I happen to have a, a, a light box for this particular shot. And then I simply turned the deep blue box that you see in the background, I turned that upside down and shot the whole thing uh, upside down. And then when you actually go to post, the first thing you do is reverse the image out. In my case, I, I use Photoshop. There's other great programs that are out there, by the way. Aperture is, is cool, and there's Lightroom, and there's, there's some others um, that do really great work. So I, uh, I reverse it out, and uh, then you can go ahead, and, and what I do, as I've already told you, is I personally go in and I'll clean them up uh, uh, digitally. Uh, which is a technique, by the way, that most of the pros uh, do. I mean, they get the watch very, very clean first, make no mistake. Um, and then there's a, let's see what else did I do on this one. Um, another thing that I'm very into, and I will tell you, you will have to get a little bit more sophisticated gear to do this, but something that works fantastically with shooting macro is a technique called HDR. And what that does is it takes a series of shots. I happen to use a, a Nikon. I use a, a D2X, but there's many, many machines that will do this. And you can set it up so that it'll take, um, in my case, I usually use five, but my machine will go as far as nine. So it'll do a series of shots that are underexposed, each one a bit more under, one basically where you set it up as dead on, and then let's say two or three above. And then you go to a program on your or your computer, and it will uh, in uh, it basically it condenses and it takes elements from each one of those and combines it. Now, why would you do that? Because it takes the best from overexposure, like in this case with a black uh, or charcoal colored dial, and it takes the best from uh, underexposure. In this case, uh, underexposure prevents those brighter bricks from being burnt out. And so it's taking the best of all of these worlds and it combines them. And then the various, uh, I, I think the one I use, I want to say it's Photomatrix or something like that. Um, but there's some other cool ones. I got that one from my Nat Geo buddies, and uh, I pretty much take their word on everything. So now what it's doing is it's taking the best exposures. And to get a little bit into kind of techie photography, uh, camera, well, photography in general, basically you can see 
a total of four to six f-stops before the image is going to either go underexposed or overexposed. It's the nature of the science. But your eye is an amazing instrument. Your eye can see up to 16 f-stops. And that's why, as a rule, when you would see this uh, image, let's say you were standing there and seeing it in real time, you wouldn't see certain things being underexposed and overexposed because your eye is a miracle and it can do this. Well, uh, cameras can't do that, whether you're film or digital, but HDR solves that. So I'm shooting a series of images and then I combined it in the HDR and then I clean it up in, uh, in Photoshop. So that's kind of how that one happened. If you haven't tried HDR, by the way, go look it up. Letter H, letter D, letter R. Okay, now I was referring to... Um, this one, I think, a little bit uh, earlier. Um, when you look at that strap, there's not going to be any lint or dirt or anything of the kind on it. And uh, first of all, I cleaned it really, really well, and uh, the crystal too. And then when I go in, um, in my post-production, in my case, I use uh, uh, Photoshop. Um, and by the way, um, that's sort of a pet peeve of mine. I'll just mention very quickly. People that claim they don't use Photoshop, and they'll go, I never use Photoshop, because they want to imply they don't do any post-production and then finally when you catch them doing it, they're using like uh, Lightroom or something. And it's, oh, I never said I didn't do post. I just don't use Photoshop. I mean, I'm a believer in post. So I will go through and I'll find the little specs and whatever. But in this one, that's a very, very clean shot of a strap. And with all what, straps, what they, they are magnets thing? for dust and for uh, what, what, the, the watch. Yeah, what brand is that? That's a Stramansky. It's a Russian. It's okay. a handmade Russian watch. Nice. Okay, that's all. And uh, so it's, uh, yeah, so we, we clean the strap as, as best as, as you can. And then um, once you've got that big high def shot on the screen, you're going to believe me, you're still going to see little bits of lint and, and whatever. Now, a purist, if you want to shoot like, for example, what Alan does, um, you leave as is. And in my case, I'll go through and I'll, I'll clean it up. Um, this one also, um, uh, another tip, I, I'm sure other programs have it in Photoshop. They have something called Photo Filter. And something I like to do when I, when I look at digital photography, very often, irrespective of the light, this can be outdoors, it can be indoors, um, it, the light, the color will shift either hotter, as in warmer, or it'll shift cooler. And so I will use what's called a photo filter, which will, let's say it's too cool, in other words, a little too much of a blue thing going on in the steel or something like that. A photo filter will reverse that out and make it more white, conversely, if it's too warm, so it's a little too yellowish. You throw a cooler filter on there and fix it. Uh, let me throw this out there, Tim, Yeah. Uh, real quickly. You know, by the way, just because we're, we're calling guys that sent in watches, and I still got several more tonight, that, and hang tight because we've got a couple of really nice ones coming up, including a, a professional a watch photography studio coming in. But um, don't think that you can't call in and ask questions of Tim about this tonight because, oh, sure. because we have a private line, you know, that's going out for those people. But we still have our Acorn TV line and our studio line. Ginger's still manning the phone. So if you have a question, we'd love to have you still. Get, we'd like to get you in the show, too. You got something for Tim or myself, especially on the photography? Ask it of Tim, not me. But I'll answer stuff, too. But give us a call. Let's get you some interaction. Well, I'll be happy to take questions. Let, let's get interactive. Uh, anybody do. has a call, whether it's about the photography or something else with uh, with what we're doing, call in. All right, sorry to bother you. T sorry to interrupt, Oh, no, not, that's a great idea. Um, so I guess we're going back to the lines, yes? Okay. Or another All shot right. from me? Yeah, no, 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 we just got two of yours, so we'll do two more. We'll kind of intersperse. We'll okay, cool. Um, and then maybe uh, after the next one, we'll go to the classic film, and we'll make it kind of short, although I love the bridge on the River Kwai. Uh, all right, so next up, we said we're going to go to Timothy Allen, and I thought uh, I reached out to this gentleman I don't really know Timothy, but I liked his staging that he put together. You'll see what I mean in just a moment here. We're trying to get Timothy on the line now. Staging's crucial. Actually, staging is, was one of the things I wanted to also talk about in that Russian shot. Okay. Um, simply because it was staged very deliberately. I put carbon fiber in there on purpose. Yeah. It's an industrial space-oriented watch, so I wanted to you know, put industrial things around it. I agree with you. Staging is, is very key. Yeah, this guy had, this had a pretty clever uh, idea here. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Timothy, are you there? He's still not. Uh, he's not answering the phone. Tim, we got his voicemail. All right. Well, you know, let's tr let's go to the next guy. We'll come back to Timothy. Uh, this next guy had some interesting stuff too. Chad Myers. We're going to try and get Chad on the phone next. Angie, you hang tough out there. We're going to get to you in a minute. <laughs> the thing is, nobody's going to want to follow uh, Franco and Angie because you know this is the studio I use in Michigan for some of our really high end stuff for Sterling. Yeah. 
they start at like eight hundred dollars and go up to like three thousand. Well, no, they do fa absolutely fantastic work. Like three thousand dollars a shot, but anyway, um, they do some nice stuff and they do lots of posts. Okay, we have someone on the line. So is this Chad? It is. Hey, hey. Chad, Larry Megan, and Tim Temple. Tim Temple, welcome to Chilling with Larry Megan. Awesome. Uh, okay, Chad. Now, you know this is a very important caller. I'll tell you why, Tim. Tell us. Well, Chad must have been watching the show with us two months ago when you came up with the idea because he was the first one two months ago oh, terrific. to respond to the idea of doing a watch photography show. Isn't that right, Chad? Yeah, that's correct. Cool. So tell us about your interest in watch photography. Well, um, I'm a graphic designer by trade, and um, I like to think that I um, – you know, create professional-looking images. Um, I, I definitely take my photography seriously. And uh, but we didn't get a headshot from you. Oh well, I, I sent you a, a little res one. I don't know if that was. Did we get uh, a headshot in there, Ronnie? Well, take a look in the folder, see if we got it. He might have sent it in really late, like ten minutes or a half hour before the show. Mm -hmm. No, I sent an email earlier today. Oh, okay. Uh, we yeah. don't have your headshot. All right, sorry. Uh, well, they can always go to my photo blog. Hopefully, before I get off the phone, I can give you guys. Well, let's let's do that right now. Uh, you know, because I went to your blog. It's really cool. It's not about watches. I mean, he's got car shots on there. Mm -hmm. Really yeah. nice stuff. What? Tell us about your blog and the address. Yeah, well, my uh, photo blog is uh, Chad O'Neill Myers. Um, it's C H A D O N E I L M Y E R S dot blogspot. Com. Okay, will you spell that again? We're going to try and do something with it. It's Chad? Absolutely. Yeah, it's C-H-A-D, and then O'Neill is O-N-E-I-L, and then Myers is M-Y-E-R-S, and it's dot .blogspot.com. But okay. I, uh, I, I post there um, every Thursday um, around 6 o'clock is when I schedule my posts. And um, a lot of it's just, um, you know, whatever catches my eye recently that I photographed or some stuff that I've shot, you know, maybe a few years ago. Um, but I've been shooting uh, for most of my life, and um, I've taken my photography more seriously in the past 10 years. And um, I've used, you know, different types of cameras, you know, anything from a point and shoot to a Nikon D80 mm -hmm. um, that I get to shoot with, um, that I shoot with at work. Um, where I work as a graphic designer. Right. Um, the uh, images you're looking at now uh, were taken with the Nikon uh, Coolpix 8800, uh, which is about a uh, maybe six year old camera uh, that has um, a 10 times zoom on it. It has um, SLR features on it. I can control aperture and, um, cool. and, and stuff like that. Uh, shutter speeds, uh, but you just can't switch out lenses on it. So it's a pretty versatile camera. Um, and these shots here uh, were taken pretty much on um, my art table with a uh, desk lamp. Um, I had the camera stabilized and on macro mode um, mm -hmm. to get those. So um, earlier you guys saw the uh, picture of the Omega um, with the, the James Bond in the background. And that's, that's probably my favorite watch image I've taken. Um, That's a great that, shot. Thank you. I submitted it to you guys. Um, and that was taken um, at my job uh, for some signage that I was designing for a trade show um, that my company uh, puts on once a year. Uh, my company is actually a um, wholesale tour distributor. And once once a year we put on a um, trade show and have some prize giveaways. And the Omega was one of the prizes. So... I had to, you know, shoot an image of it, you know, put it on a sign uh, for the show, and I uh, just wanted to communicate um, that it was a special edition, you know, James Bond uh, Omega Seamaster. Um, so that was kind of the the idea behind that shot. Um, this picture of this relic, um, which was a, a watch that I wore for almost five years, um, this shot that there again on my art table. Uh, with the desk lamp, uh, the camera stabilized. Um, the watch itself is uh, silver tone, so I just changed it all uh, black and white um, just to enhance that a bit. 
um, but really you, you wouldn't be able to tell much. Did you uh, did you shoot that in a, in a black and white mode uh, in in camera, or was that shot in color and you converted it post? Uh, converted post um, in Photoshop, and um, you know, as a graphic designer, I was able to you know get into Photoshop uh, about there again about ten years ago, um, and then you know self-teaching myself photography and, and just learning more about uh, Photoshop on the job and things like that. That's really um, helped my photography. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, everything you were saying, Tim, about you know, post-process being essential is very true. I, I mean, I, I definitely agree with you 100%. Thanks, man. Um, you know, all the professionals do that. And you need to. I mean, the cameras, I mean, the, um, the image isn't really complete. Well, you know, my, um, my thought on that, to expand a little bit further, is that, um, again, for the, you know, to address the, the Pierce for a second, I mean, what did you guys think dodging and burning was in the dark room? Exactly. That's post. Oh, exactly. I mean, you're, now we're just doing it in the computer. Hey, listen, I hate to break Absolutely. up this party. Listen, Chad, I just want to let everybody see what your blog looks like. We've got a shot of it. Check this oh. out. This is Chad O'Neill Myers' blog. Can we check that out? Well, here we're going to get it up there. Cool, cool. There it is. The yeah, Tim. Um, oh, is it there, there it is. Okay, and, and that's my latest post. Hold on. Um, yeah, it looks like it'll stretch in a little bit. What's the problem, guys? We're trying to get we're trying to get your blog up there. It's a really cool blog, and I want everybody to know about it, Chad, because uh, I appreciate it. Yeah, I mean, I like your car shots here. Thank you. Yeah, I, um, I've taken a lot of those at um, this one tourist attraction uh, here in Kissimmee, Florida. It has a car show every uh, Saturday night where, like, you know, 300 oh, wow. um, classic cars come. Yeah, you a have lot, that lot of guys every are, Saturday? Oh, yeah, every Saturday night. It's a place called Old Town. I would be shooting and, um, that almost every week. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Exactly. Yeah. And there's there's usually on average about 300 classic cars that show up there, and um, it's definitely eye candy. I'm able to get a lot of great images. That image right there you're seeing is a, a long exposure, you know, camera on a tripod. Was that um? um what was it of? Uh, that was like a like a carnival type ride. Like yeah, a that's what I thought. Ferris wheel. So yeah. What's your thought on 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 time exposure? Um. Well, you know, it, it um, just depends on what you're shooting, um, what kind of effect you're wanting to get, and you got to experiment. And the good thing with digital is you're able to see immediately how it's looking. Um, but like that one right there you saw it was just, you know, maybe two or three seconds. I, I can't remember exactly what it was, but... You just gotta mess around with it. Yeah, I, I, yeah. Whenever I'm shooting carnival rides, I've only done that a couple of times. Um, yeah, messing it around is the, is the way to do it. Um, yeah. I also it's kind of like uh, Wayne Gretzky when he talks about you know you you play for where the puck's going to be, not where it is. A lot of times I'll plan the shot for where the ride's going to be. Yeah. And kind of set up for that. And it doesn't take a very long exposure. I mean, I used to think before I got right. into it, you know, it's going to be like a 10 second or up to 30 seconds. I mean, you're right. You can blur those things out and beautifully in like a half second yeah. or a second. I mean, it's not, not a huge Absolutely. To-do. Absolutely. I mean, one time I was shooting, and this image is on my blog too, if, if people go digging, but um, they're at that old town place. They have a, a big Ferris wheel, and they used to have a. Um, one of those swing rides, you know, that goes in circles. Yeah, yeah. And um, I was trying to get a shot of the Ferris wheel spinning and the, um, um, the swing ride spinning, and they wouldn't always be going at the same time. So I'd have to wait until they both were going at the same time, and mm-hmm. I'd have to experiment on the, you know, the time lapse and everything, and um, finally got, you know, that one image I was looking for. And it, it took, like, you know, 30 frames uh, to get that one image, Yeah. You know? Another advantage uh, of digital, by the way. Absolutely. I mean, digital is such a great learning tool. You know, yeah. I I mean, I started taking my photography seriously when I was still shooting film, mm-hmm. but I would have to buy the rolls of film. I'd have to wait for it to get processed, um, which was post-processed, done by someone else. Yeah. Um, but now, you know, I'm able to do my own processing in Photoshop, shoot as much as I want. Um, it's, it's just a great thing, but... Um, yeah, I mean, I, I've you know listened to many you know professional photographers uh, speak and and things, and um, 
uh, I'm a big fan of Scott Kelby. I don't know if you've heard of him. I don't. I don't know uh, uh, Scott, but I, I'm sure he's amazing. Okay, yeah, he's like he's a Photoshop guru and he's a uh, photography guru and um, a big trainer. And um, you know, really, the image it begins in the camera and you know ends in post. I mean, it's not really finished yet. Every image needs sharpened. Um, yeah, we can talk about it. Oh, by the way, can I can I stop you on that point? Because you're obviously experienced. I, I have some thoughts on on sharpening, but what, what's yeah. your uh, your uh, do's and don'ts in the sharpening tools? Um, you know, there's um, and there again, talking about that trainer Scott Kelby. He has he has a book series called the Digital Photography Book Series, and he had like um, a, a, like a few settings that he uses um, for most things. In that book, he gave um, the things you can plug in to your Unsharp mask mm -hmm. setting in Photoshop. Yeah. And uh, he had one for people. He had one for landscapes. He had one for general. And um, so what I did was I set up, um, you know, pre-recorded actions in Photoshop with those um, settings. And, like, the general setting, I'll do that to most images I take. Yeah, so, I find that the uh, – oh, go ahead. I'm sorry. Well, I'm, I'm just saying, you know, of course, you know, we can also talk about, you know, the sharpening beginning when you take take the image. You know, mm -hmm. Make sure you're using fast enough shutter speed if you're hand holding, um, or you know, make sure the camera's stabilized on something. Just trying to get as sharp as possible to begin with, but then still sharpen it in Photoshop. Yeah, I find that the sharpening tool, uh, especially for people that are, are just getting into a photography, it, it is one of the most horribly overused tools. Um, where people think, um, I don't make a music analogy in, in like my recording studio, where people think if a little reverb sounds good, then a lot of reverb is going to sound really, really good. Um, right. But it doesn't. And the sharpening, I, I, to me, it, it's about uh, subtlety. I, I like setting it to 0.9, and then I just really put in a relative few you know, percentage points. And as yeah. you can obviously tell, I mean, you look at a lot of work, that would have been a good shot, but whoever shot it, they crank the sharpening up way too much, and it, it crunches right. the pixels, and not good. Yeah, so one of yeah. my tips on sharpening is less is more. Yeah, absolutely. You know, it doesn't take a lot. Um, but, yeah, I mean, but yeah, you can tell the difference whenever oh, for sure. you add it, you know, in post. And, um, yeah, that's what's going to make uh, your photography stand apart, you know, as far as the other guys out there listening. Um you know, make sure your images are as sharp as possible. Um, and like we were saying, I mean, that begins with, you know, stabilizing the camera. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, earlier you, you mentioned um, ASA, you know, yes. which is also, you know, ISO or film mm -hmm. speed. Um, and, you know, always shoot at the lowest um, film speed possible uh, to get the best uh, quality image. You know, the other caller mentioned about getting grainy images inside and um of course tim as you know that's you know the camera cranking up the iso yeah he's probably hitting like an 800 or something probably for the low light or more um, you know yeah what, yeah for it to keep up grainy. and of course then again on the higher end slrs um you can shoot at high ISOs, and they're getting a lot better. Yeah, they're yeah. I, I agree, they're getting better, but it's still by no means perfect. I mean, one of the tips, and then we're, we're I think we're going to move on to some other stuff here. But one of the other uh, the tips I'll give you guys really quick, if you're getting into ISOs, if your camera has a, a, a setting, it's probably the lowest it's going to go for most of them is probably 100. My tip, and I picked this up from guys that know like way more than me, the Nat Geo guys. Um, you shoot at 200 because there's no discernible difference between 200 and 100, but you'll get a lot more uh, uh, variance in your shutter speeds. Nice. Well, listen, Chad, um, I want to thank you very much for uh, participating and for responding so quickly two months ago. Um, maybe if you didn't respond so quickly, maybe this show didn't even happen. So, yeah. so uh, well, well, thank you so much. I mean, obviously, you know, Tim, we could go on talking for a long time. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you guys could. But anyway, everybody out there, check out Chad's blog. I think it's really cool. I like your car shots. It's I do too. Chad O'Neill Myers dot blogspot dot com. Is that it? That, that is it. And, and thank you, Larry, so much for having me on. Um, you know, obviously, I watch you guys all the time with Shop NBC. I DVR you guys' at shows. Um, my wife would attest to that that I'm watching you guys all the time. Um, <laughs> okay. But, uh, but yeah, I really appreciate it. 
Cool. And, uh, thanks. Thanks a lot, Thank Chad. You. Make sure you get an email in for the uh, prize. Maybe you're, you'll end up winning it, and you can give it to your wife. All right. All right. Thanks, guys. All right. Cool. Thanks, Chad. All right. Um, we should probably give a shot. I want to give this guy, Timothy Allen, one more chance. Uh, so can we give Timothy Allen one more chance? Timothy, if you're watching the show, we're, we're going to give you a chance here. We called you a few minutes ago, and you didn't answer the phones. Maybe he's sleeping. Of course, he is on the East Coast, so it is uh, pretty late back there. But, uh, you know, and if, tell you what, if he doesn't answer the phone, I want to just show a couple of his pictures anyway because I talked about his composition, and I'll show you what I liked. We'll give him a chance to answer the phone. He's in uh, Florida, isn't he? Yeah, Fort Lauderdale, Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Let's see. Is he, he's not answering, huh? Okay. We got the right number, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what we need—a wrong number at this hour. Yeah, wake somebody up. You know, that, that that'd make a hell of a webcast. <laughs> it let's, would be a great. Let's webcast, just let's just call Larry, people and you know wake them up. Serious and die. viewership. I'm, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Nine. Tune in. All right. Going to All right. So anyway, I guess Timothy uh, couldn't hang out. But if we have a couple of his shots, I want to show you what I really liked. I I kind of dug it. Is this his? Okay, but that's not the one I was thinking of, but that's a, obviously a nice shot. Let's see if we can get it here. It's the Cigar 1 and 2, Ronnie. We won't go too much into his watch shots. We'll just take a peek. But see, here, look at this one, okay? I like this shot. You got the wrist. You got the watch. You got Now, see, I said no wrist shots, mm -hmm. but to me, this is not a wrist shot. This is a lifestyle shot. You see it there? with the, You got the scotch or whatever that is. You got the cigar. Uh, let's, uh, let's go ahead and take a quick uh, look at his Cigar 2. Because this one's even better, I think, because you don't see the scotch, but you see the label on the cigar. I like that. You well, think, well, what's the big deal there? Are you getting carried away for no, nothing? No, I don't, it? actually. Um, I think it's clever. One of the one of the things, let's talk composition just, just really quick. I like that. Um, I do, too, and I'll tell you why you're liking it, whether or not you, you necessarily realize it. I don't even smoke cigars, um, but I like the no, idea. No, it's nothing. It's, it's, it, it's in the layout of the shot. There's, there's the way that the human mind reacts to an image. It's true in painting. It's true in photography. It's called the rule of threes. Okay. If you can set up three highlights or three objects that will stand out in a shot, and in this case, you've got the watch, you've got the cigar, especially with the, the highlighted uh, area on the band, and then down below, I'm not sure what he's got going there, like the keys or whatever, and so you've got the, is the belt buckle, so you've got the three, it's the triangle. Right, go back to the other cigar shot, Ronnie, if you would. That's the one that's got the, the, the booze in there. All right, there's the watch. You could actually almost argue for four there, but I would say your three shots, the uh, shot of whiskey, the cigar, and the watch. Yeah, I mean, here's a guy. He's hanging out at the bar. He's got a shot. He's got a, sh he's got a cigar. He's got a cool watch. I, I just, I, I dig it. Yeah. And it's, it's great composition. Anyway, I'm sorry we missed Timothy, but at least, Timothy, I got your shots in there. That was Timothy Allen. Uh, we gave you a couple chances. And I see we've got a video Skyper coming in. It's our good friend. Mark from Queens. Mark. Welcome <laughs> welcome back, Mark. Thank you, Larry, and hi, Tim. How are you? I'm very well. How are you, Mark? Great. Question for you. One of my yes, biggest sir. intimidations in photography is I have tens of thousands of photos, like I'm sure most people do, that you probably never even view again, but Photoshop. Mm -hmm. I get so intimidated, you know, when I see my kids playing with it, it's so Greek to me. Is is there a uh, like a dummies or what would you recommend for people? There are actually several. I, I I don't know them off the top of my head by exact name, but there are several beginners manuals for for Photoshop that are uh, quite available. Um, I'll, some of them actually ship with DVDs, and they'll give you a uh, you load the DVD obviously into your computer, and it'll it'll give you a lesson by lesson. Um, I didn't go that way. I actually started with Photoshop, and I cracked the manual a little bit. We're going back like 15 years ago, back on Photoshop. I think my first was Photoshop 2 or something. Uh, and um, I, I just plunged in. And one of the things I suggest with Photoshop is instead of viewing it as intimidating, which I fully appreciate, is uh, just start hitting all the buttons. Just throw a photo in it and just go, what does this thing do? And because you can always reverse it out, uh, find the history in Photoshop which I think is actually Command H. I could be wrong in that, so don't quote me. But you can undo everything that you do in Photoshop. So you can say, what does this do? Oh, I hate that. Well, just undo it. And then, oh, what does this do? And then you combine that with just kind of 
you know, just glancing through, um, and, and you'll discover little tricks and tips really fast. I mean, one of the things that I go to is if you go up to the menus, uh, go through your drop downs and find one called uh, Adjust, and that's going to open up another menu. And inside of that, you're going to have things like um, uh, changing, uh, not, well, you can change it, but, it, but it's altering color and things like that. You can have a lot of fun with that, uh, just messing around, just basic stuff. And I, I think if you'll just, instead of viewing it as this very complex machine, which it can be, and you just start looking at, at the first couple of levels, you can have a huge amount of fun with it. I thank you. And the other thing, i just like your opinion. Sure. With yes. what's happening with the iPhone and the various cameras and the constant increasing in the megapixels, do you see the low-end point-and-shoot camera industry itself just... Uh, dying out. Some of them are trying to incorporate Wi-Fi in there and stuff like that, but uh, people are arguing, well, why should I carry both when my telephone could actually take the same picture? Um, great question. Uh, this, of course, uh, on, you know, basically uh, relatively the same time in which Kodak just filed for, uh, uh, for bankruptcy. I, I think one of the ironies of that is that Kodak, if memory serves, actually was one of the principal inventors of digital photography in the 70s. And they shelved it because at the time they were making so much money on film products. Uh, but uh, to your question, do I do I see the, uh, the cell phone um, usurping the point and shoot? Uh, short answer, yeah. Yeah, I do. Um, I think what's going to happen is once the cell phone, uh, more accurately, I, I think we should call it a smartphone, is what's going to take over. Um, between the software and the processors getting faster and they're going to get better and better lenses in them, that uh, it's just a matter of time before there's no more point and shoots because you'll just use your, uh, your phone. Uh, I agree. I think they're going away. And I Won't also, be this year, but they'll, they'll go away. And I also feel the same way like on my iPhone, you can obviously shoot in the movie mode and rumors are that they're going to be again enhancing that and it's like I don't use even the the, the low end uh, video recorders anymore because it, I can't really I know some of them say HD but for, for just general use I, I can't equate why carry two pieces around when you can do the same thing I, I, I agree uh, and I'll, I'll take you one step further uh, something that you're going to see initially on some of the high end SLRs and it will very quickly roll downhill in the point and shoots um, is HDR capability. What I was talking about earlier with numerous exposures, uh, in the not-too-distant future, you're going to be able to do that inside the camera. Right now, you have to take the separate shots and then assemble them. And, and there is a real art to that, and I do think that approach will stick around. But, uh, yeah, point-and-shoots and the SLRs are going to be able to do HDR in the box pretty soon. Well, and just one watch question, I'll let you get on because I know you have a lot of people. Yeah, please. Uh, <clears throat> with the, uh, for argument's sake, you can see I'm wearing the Zeus right now. Um, <clears throat> the cleaning of the bands, mm -hmm. if you use those wipes and what have you, uh, will that, could that cause the actual discolorization of, of the band itself if you use, you know? That's a fair question. I, I tell you, I don't have a scientific answer. Um, my immediate answer is I only do it once. Um, this isn't like I'm continually hitting that with wipes like every day or every other day. I only do it once. I'm only doing it for photography. And I've never heard of a discoloration or, or uh, anything of the kind from just doing it uh, once. Um, and it's not the only thing I use. I've used Q-tips and paper towels and whatever I've got uh, lying around. I hope, I hope that answers your question. I, um, on prolonged use, I don't... I don't have an answer, um, but I, you know, I just do it if I'm going to be doing macro photography on, on a particular strap. Okay. Thank you. And Larry, I really have nothing to ask of you this evening except great show. Oh, thanks. Thanks a lot, Mark. We always appreciate your participation. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. All right, fellas, I think what we'll do is we're going to take just a, a, a little break you know, from the uh, watch, the photography uh, talk, and when we come back, I'm going to go to Angie and Franco Zarilli. Uh, these guys are professionals, uh, professionals. Uh, Franco is a real artist, and Angie uh, runs the business. <laughs> but okay, we'll come back to them. Let's go to the classic film zone. <laughs> You know, 
this is the part of the show we cover a little bit of classic movies, and uh, I'm really uh, disappointed that uh, we don't have Savvy Avi tonight, but I'm keeping my fingers crossed, and I'm not going to give up. I'm going to be like a dog with a bone, Avi. I'm not letting you get away. We're going to get that computer situation straightened out. Now, uh, normally, you guys know I like to go a little bit lighthearted, and I like to go with musicals and stuff like that, but I knew we were going to have a pretty heavy male audience tonight, so I thought, let me do a nice war movie. <laughs> <laughs> because light viewing. a little guy, but you know what? For a war movie, it it this is kind of light viewing, believe it or not. I love this movie. It's the Bridge on the River Kwai. Tim, do you know this movie? Uh, I don't know it intimately, but I've seen it, and I think it's a great film. Yeah, uh, night great classic film. Yeah, Wonderful. now and we've got a few pictures. Uh, you know, we're gonna pop up there. By the way, did I, uh, Ronnie? Did I show you that we for the classic films when we actually had a uh, overlay? I might not have told you about it. Uh, we don't need to use it now. It's it's Bridge on a River Kwai. But in any case, um, here's a nice shot. Now, this is actually the bridge that they constructed. What this story is all about, and, you know, it, it is a fictional story. Uh, this movie was produced in 1957. It did win the Academy Award for Best Picture. And, of course, it won seven Academy Awards. That's Alec Guinness on the left. This is William Holden. He did a, He actually escaped the prison camp. Um, but this prison camp is in Thailand, and it's you know run by the Japanese during World War II, and it has American and British soldiers are in this prison camp. And right there, that's um, that's William Holden. He had, this is when he came back after he escaped to help the British, uh, you know, the Allied forces blow up the bridge. And again, it is a fictional movie, but Alec Baldwin, he, there he is. He won the uh, Oscar for the Best Actor of 1957. It was just, you had to see this movie to really understand what an incredible job. I think you mean Alec Guinness. Huh? Oh, did I say Baldwin? Yes, oh, my God. Uh, it's Alec Guinness. Thank you, Tim. <laughs> it is late, you know. I mean, come on. It is a subliminal slip, but you're right. That's Alec Guinness. Obviously not Alec Baldwin, unless, you know, this some came back in a second life. Baldwin. But anyway, uh, the thing is this. Um, Oh, and I mean, just everything about this. This is when they first came to the camp. It's not a true story, but it did kind of, you know, very loosely based on the construction of the uh, Burma Railway in 1942-43, um, you know, uh, that was actually built by prisoners. So there, there actually is a little bit loose interpretation of a true story, but it is completely fictionalized. And so what you have here is the um, the Japanese, they must build this bridge. Uh, on the River Kwai, and they're going to use their prison, uh, you know, the prison camp, uh, you know, the prisoners of war to build it. And um, so they actually start off the movie where they summoned all these uh, British soldiers from other prison camps along the river to come to this one camp where they had to build the bridge that the train was going to pass over. And so I'm going to show the first scene that I want to show. It kind of sets up the movie where you, this is Colonel Saito who runs the prison camp. And uh, you'll the movie kind of starts off. You get a, a little bit of a look at Alec Bo, uh, Alec Guinness, and also of course of uh, William Holden as the American in the camp, and he's faking being a, an officer. But let's take a little uh, peek at that. It's kind of a short clip. I shortened it up. It was actually much longer. But you'll actually see the British soldiers being marched into this camp, and they're being marched in there for one purpose. They're going to be workers on this uh, bridge that they have to work. And here's that uh, scene right now. the right uh, clip anyway it, you got to go into the it's got a zero one in front of it you're in the wrong yeah let's see here we're going to get that clip for you classic film uh march into camp that's it all right here's that scene for you
All right, and I, I shortened it up. Now, what happens right there, of course, is Colonel Saito comes out of his out of his quarters there, and he addresses the whole team of them, telling them, you know, basically, uh, that's a good picture to show, Ronnie, but uh, they're telling him that tomorrow you're going to all start working to build this bridge, and even the officers are going to work as well. And here you see Alec Guinness, who, of course, is the British colonel, and, of course, he objects. He says that uh, it's against the Geneva Con Convention to have officers working, uh, you know, doing manual labor. And uh, Colonel Saito says, oh, yeah, well, we'll just see about that. And he puts him in the hole. And, you know, anyway, they lose like a whole bunch of time, over a month of time, and they practically torture Alec Guinness. And ultimately, the Japanese can't build the bridge properly. They're making all kinds of mistakes. They put it in the wrong location. It's collapsing and everything else. And finally... Uh, what's funny is the what, it's not so funny right in the beginning, but Alec Guinness says the British colonel he wins out and he, by holding out, and they um, he says okay, you know the officers don't have to work, and so then ultimately Alec Guinness leads his British troops to build this incredible bridge <coughs> that's going to last with the oak over 600 years and. And uh, he's actually helping the enemy at this point, but he's building the morale of his uh, prisoners. Meanwhile, uh, the American, William Holden, he escapes the prison camp by a miracle because they're on an island in Thailand. And um, he's at the, um, you know, the British camp where he's now, you know, gotten out of this. And they want to bring him back to blow up the bridge. And... Um, I'm going to skip the meeting with Saito because that's a six-minute clip. It's a great meeting. This is where, in the meeting where Alec Guinness, as, the, uh, as Colonel Nicholson of the British Army, just takes over the meeting, and Saito is beside himself, but he has no other choice. It, it, that is comical. But now here's William Holden as sh uh, Shears, and he was just a regular private. But when he was captured, one of the American officers was killed. He traded uniforms with the officer because he was hopeful of getting better treatment. And so now that Shears has escaped and he's back with the, you know, uh, allied forces, you know, he thinks that everybody thinks he's a, a, an American officer, which he's not. And then they come to him and they say, well, we want to take you back in. And I think it's pretty comical. Take a look at this. By the way, I never congratulated you on your escape. It was a good show, I must say. I was lucky. If your sea rescue plane hadn't spotted me, I wouldn't be here. No, I suppose not. Would you like to see where you were? All right. Well, of course, our information's rather scanty. It's mostly based on your report. But we think the camp is about here. Say, do your intelligence people have any idea what happened to that uh, Colonel Nicholson? No. He had the guts of a maniac. They were about to shoot him and he didn't bat an eye. Well, I suppose if you're about to be shot, there isn't a great deal you can do, is there? Now, here is the River Kwai, and here is the Siamese village where you were helped. And here is the railway. But then you must be fairly familiar with all this area. Oh, not really. I was out of my head half the time. Now then, the railway starts down here in Singapore. Malaya, Bangkok, Rangoon. Their idea, of course, is to drive on through into India. Mm. Where was I picked up? Oh, um, about here. Well, as you know, the Japanese aim to open the Bangkok-Rangoon section by the middle of May. Naturally, we're going to try and prevent them. It's too far for bombers to carry an adequate load, so we shall have to go in and smash it up on the ground. How are you going to get there? Parachute drop and then march. With demolition equipment through that jungle? Yes. Our chief problem is lack of first-hand knowledge. You see, none of us have ever been there. Well, I don't want to discourage you, Major, but... Uh... It should be interesting. Colonel Green has given me the quiet bridge. I'm going to take a team in and blow it up. Lucky you. Uh, are you sure you won't have a cup of tea? No, thanks. Look, Major, I don't want to be rude, but I've got a luncheon date in Colombo at two, and she's beautiful, so if there are any questions, I can... Oh, yes, of course, I'm sorry. Well, it is only one question, actually. How would you feel about going back? Come again. I know, under the circumstances, it's a bit much, but... You see, you do have a unique knowledge for our purpose. And we'd love to have you with us. You mean to tell me that that's why you brought me here? To ask me this? Well, frankly, yes. 
Major, I just got out of there. My escape was a miracle. Even your people said so. And now you want me to go back? Don't be ridiculous. Oh, this is very embarrassing. I oh, let's stop getting around. I can't go back. I don't belong to you. I belong to the American Navy. Yes, of course. Actually, Colonel Green has already taken the matter up with your people. With my people? Yes, your navies turned you over to us. A uh, signal arrived uh, yesterday morning from your CNC Pacific, authorizing your temporary transfer of duty to Force 316. They can't do this to me. Well, I'm afraid they have. <laughs> It was awfully difficult to know how to break it to you. No, but they can't do this to me. I really mean it. My Navy's made a mistake. Uh-oh. Look, I'm not a Navy commander. I I'm not even an officer. Oh. No, the whole thing's a fake. I'm just an ordinary swap jockey, second class. Oh. When the Houston sunk, I made it ashore with an officer, a real commander. Later on, we ran into a Japanese patrol, and he was killed. I figured it was just a matter of time before I was captured, so... So you changed uniforms with the dead man? I thought officers would get better treatment in prison camps. Well, that's very sensible. Not that it did me any good, because at Saito's camp, the officers worked along with the rest. Yes, there's always the unexpected, isn't there? I kind of got used to being a commander, and so when I arrived here at the hospital, I took a look at the enlisted man's warden, and I took a look at the officer's ward, and I said to myself, oh, let's let it ride along for a while. There were certain definite advantages. Yes, I saw one of them on the beach. Anyway, that's the whole story. And the point of it is that you can't use me. You want an officer for your team, an American commander named Shears, and he doesn't exist. When the Navy brass learns the truth about me, they'll say, ship him all in irons for impersonating an officer, something like that. Once that happens, I've got it made. Got it, one? May, I'd like that drink now. Oh, I'll apply for a medical discharge. I'll tell him that I impersonated an officer because I went off my rocker in the jungle. I'm getting worse, you know. Sometimes I think I'm Admiral Halsey. Well, that's quite a clever plan. It's not only clever, it's foolproof. And my Navy finds out who I am. Those temporary orders you've got won't be worth the paper they're written on. This is your photograph, isn't it? Where'd you get this? Well, it took a bit of doing, uh, because naturally your people couldn't identify you at first. But finally, your CNC Pacific sent us a copy of your service record, a photograph, a fingerprints, of course, everything. Would you uh, care to have a look? No. You see, we've known about your um, actual rank for nearly a week. Your name is in an awkward position. In one sense, you're a blasted hero for making an escape to the jungle. But at the same time, they can't very well bring you home and give you the Navy Cross for impersonating officer, can they? I suppose that's why they were so happy to hand you over to us. You see? Hot potato. As far as your present rank is concerned, we're fairly informal about those things in Force 316. So you'll have the simulated rank of major. Simulated major. That figures. Well. As long as I'm hooked, I might as well volunteer. Good show. Oh, it's Colonel Green, sir. Uh, this is Major Shears. He's just volunteered to go back and help me blow up the quiet bridge. Really? Good show. Jolly good show, Major. I don't know. I, the, to me, the British are so funny. They're just a good show. You know, they had him over a barrel. They knew all the time he was impersonating an officer. Do you remember that scene at all? I, I, I vaguely. I mean, you can probably yeah. quote it. I can't quote it, but... Uh... Anyway, so, uh, you know, listen, we're going to get back to the watch photography. You know, I, I love getting into these old films. You know, we have one more clip. It's the one, of course, where they blow up the bridge. Do we want to see him blow up the bridge? I, I, I think it's only fair. <laughs> I mean, all this way. I mean, that's what it's all about. All right. Um, 
But you know what? I'll tell you what. Why don't we take a break and we'll come back to the bridge blow up? Let's go back to the watch photography because right. we got people waiting yeah, by the phone. The the if All we right. have time, we'll come back. We'll show you the last scene that we had clipped for tonight for the classic film zone. Uh, Ronnie, let's go ahead. I want to get Angie and Franco Zarelli on the phone there in Michigan. And of course, now, my goodness gracious, it's one o'clock in the morning back there. So um, let's go ahead and let's give them a call. Uh, now, again, let me just do a little setup here with Angie and Franco. Uh, Zarelli, they um, they they have a professional photography studio and they specialize in jewelry and watches, and they've done stuff for us for Sterling Original uh, that we've put into some of the you know big time publications, as far as Watches International, Grand Complications, but they shoot for lots of companies and uh, you know shooting jewelry is is no uh, easy trick. Angie, are you there? Hold on, hold on, Angie. Hello? Hey. Yeah, hi Angie, are you there? Welcome to uh welcome to the show, Angie. Hey Larry, how are you? Good, good, good. I know it's kinda late. Thank you for hanging in there. Have you been watching the show at all uh up to now? Yes, we've been watching part of the show. A good oh. part of the show. Okay, and you've got Franco with you, your husband? Yes, I do. Hi, Larry. Hey Franco, how are you? Good, good. How are you doing? Excellent, excellent. I'm anxious to show a few of your shots. You guys sent me, you know, a bunch of links, and, you know, I, I didn't take everything. We just didn't have time. But I, I grabbed a few of them, including, uh, I think, one Sterling shot, maybe. But um, I wanted to, you know, give people a chance at home to see, you know, some professional shots. And I know you guys get paid big bucks for this. Uh, let, let's go ahead and take a look at one of them now, and you can tell us what we're looking at. Yeah, it's uh, a Chopard, and uh, um, it's a, a very close-up, I mean, it's an extreme close-up of uh, uh, the dial, and, uh, but, uh, oh, oh, I can hear them. Now, let me ask you this, Franco, when you shot this, is this with crystal or without crystal? Uh, it is with uh, crystal. Because I know you shoot um, without two. Can you raise the volume? Sorry about that. Uh, yeah. Because I know we've sent you some watches where we took the crystals out. Hello, Larry. Yeah. Can you hear me? I hear you fine. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's better. Yeah. Uh, basically, what it is is uh, we, we do all studio shots, and uh, um, because of this way we have the total control of uh, lighting. And uh, we set up the lighting uh, the way we want it. And then um, there is a, in here, there is not much retouching done except for uh, spotting. Um, although a little dust uh, here and there. Mm -hmm. uh, that's about it. Oh. All right. Uh, we, let's, let's pop another one in there. And I know when you shoot these things, uh, now this is it, and Tim, you know, feel free to jump in here. Uh, this one's pretty interesting. This is right? a beautiful shot. What, what now? What brand watch is this? It's got a DD. Is that Daniel Mink? Yeah, it's a Daniel Mink. Yes. Okay. Now I know a lot of times you shoot your watches. You shoot straps separately. Now I don't envision that this was shot separately. Oh uh, yes, this was a uh, outline. And then we created the same texture that you see on uh, the dial and uh, on the band uh, for the background. Yeah, and those backgrounds, of course, are done with Photoshop. Yeah, totally created in Photoshop. Yeah. I mean, do you ever do them kind of organically where, you know, you have a watch and you actually stage it in a setting and then shoot it? Or are they all, ba fo you know, Photoshopped in the backgrounds? Sure, sure. Uh, we we stage uh, watches all the time. It's uh, it's it's uh, depending on uh, you know the budget. Of course, uh, the Photoshop way is uh, the cheapest way to go, and uh, sometimes we have to uh, accommodate uh, budgets. Right now, this one here doesn't look like it had a crystal in it. Uh, yes, it did. It did. Okay. Yeah. How do you guys yeah, get the... Yeah, we outline the... Uh, all the parts of the dial, and um, if we have to, 
and um, and then uh, do whatever we need to do uh, to recreate basically the the design intention, you know, the designer intention. And Larry, uh, most of the watches that we do receive, we do receive with crystals on it. You know, of course, it's always best and optimal to have it without the crystal. But this is the extra work that we do to get so that you see a clear view of the dial. Um, and these are the stages in Photoshop that we work in. But also, let, let me ask you this, uh, Angie. It, it, the the idea, and I know we've sent you at least one or two without the crystal, and we have to pack it up very carefully and everything. But having not having the crystal is not only about getting a, a clean shot at the dial. It also helps you with the lighting to not have that crystal. Isn't that correct? Oh, yes, it is. And uh, before uh, digital, we used to get watches without the crystal. And, um, and the manufacturer accommodated us uh, with, the, with the system because uh, before digital, um, to retouch an image, uh, you have to put it on a SciTech machine and uh, with the, uh, it will cost you uh, close to 500 bucks an hour you know, to do any retouching. Right, and, and typically don't your shots... Start. I mean, you're welcome to just say what it is, but they, don't they usually range between 800 to two or three thousand per shot? Um, no, 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 not that much. Uh, between uh, between uh, two and six. Because, I don't know, Paul. Well, I mean, well, you're just talking about the photography alone, but uh, just doing jobs with Larry. We're talking full production where you might have the background. So, d depending on it. And if it's a lifestyle and there's props involved, sure. I mean, a shot can go anywhere from just a clear, straight-on soldier shot to um, a set-up shot or a lifestyle. It could go into the thousands. It, 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 it depends on, on the image, on the shot. Yeah. And, and, you know, I sh what I should have done, Angie, is I should, and I didn't do it. I was scrambling late today, uh, but... I should have grabbed a picture of your facilities, uh, some of the pictures, and shown the people at home what your facilities are like. What, do you want to describe it to people? Oh, yes, that's right. I did send it to you, Larry. I didn't have time, Angie. You sent it at like 6 o'clock. You know, we were scrambling. I know. Um, well, you know, we, as, as you know, we built our, our studio, and we've been in there for a little over a year now, and it's about a 4,800-square-foot uh, studio. And we're just really excited to be in there. And uh, a good friend of ours, he's an architect in Italy, and Franco went to Italy. And he had him do all the architecture to the studio. Uh, beautiful new entrance. We have a great large studio. Um, we also have a second floor balcony. So if we need to shoot up high, we can do that as well with larger items, obviously. Um, and we're just really, really happy to be in there. Yeah, we're really excited about the new studio. It's a, it's a beautiful uh, studio. I've seen the pictures. Um, Thank you. Yeah, it's it's sensational. Uh, and what was I going to say, uh, Tim? Do you have any questions for them? Uh, I do actually. Um, your your the clarity in your dial shots are wonderful. I'm I'm wondering if on occasion do you use uh, polarizing filters to clean that up, and if so, what's your opinion on that? No, we we outline the dial, and uh, we work with the levels in Photoshop to um, externalize uh, the uh, the pixels. Uh, basically, um, we take uh, um, a few uh, a few shots or I mean a few exposures. Mm -hmm. Uh, and we pick uh, the best exposure for uh, the dial and the best exposure for uh, the all watch. And so it's then uh, in Photoshop outline, uh, we separate you know, the, the two and then we put together. So it's not HDR, you're actually um, uh, more or less, you're, you're moving a, a physical section from uh, one photo and integrating it into the second and so on. Yeah, you don't need you don't need HDR. Uh, just uh, uh, the latitude of uh, um, 
exposure of our cameras is ten stop. So it's uh, it's kind of useless to do your HDR. Uh, you know, let me. I'm interested about this. You know, I actually met you guys uh, and found you before. You know, we even did any watch business together uh, with actually buying some stock images from you of yellow diamond jewelry. Do you remember that, Angie? Yes, I do. We met in Vegas at the show. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Um, but the thing is that I'm trying to get at here is you guys specialize in jewelry and watches. Are you doing anything else other than jewelry and watches, or that's what you're known for? Now, with the, with the new studio, we start to uh, doing the moving into other uh, um, uh, areas of photography, and uh, I would like to go into uh, portrait or um, portraits, and uh, I have a few already my new website uh they i mean i started a new portfolio with that what's the new website people shop larry and franco just came back from italy as well and he did a lot of beautiful shots over there too landscape photography um so we're trying to open up and uh get into other sectors of uh photography as well Franco originally started photography with fashion and then moved into product photography. So we're getting back to that yeah. kind of photography along with the jewelry and watch. Yeah, well, <clears throat> isn't it, wouldn't you say this is true, Franco, that shooting jewelry and then even watches is, I think, another level, but jewelry and watches has to be the most difficult thing out there to shoot. I mean, way more difficult than fashion or, or shooting people, I would think. Oh, it is, it is. And that's, uh, and that's what uh, basically kept, uh, kept us uh, alive in uh, hard times, is, uh, this specialization that we have. Um, basically, shooting jewelry and watches, uh, what you're shooting actually is whatever surround the jewelry and watches. So basically, you are shooting the set that you are shooting, and uh, it's all about lighting, and uh, it's all about how you set up the light. How um, see, I, I study a lot in um, back in Bologna uh, about uh, textures. Um, I have uh, a lot of classes about uh, uh, textures, and so they. Uh, got me into micro photography where texture is uh, the most important thing and how you create the texture from the lighting all right tim um yeah actually i've got uh, one or two questions uh when you're shooting watches uh in particular what are your go-to uh what's your go-to gear what do you like in cameras and lenses well the most important thing is the lighting Without the lighting, you have nothing. And uh, then the second most important thing is the lens. Uh, the quality of uh, the lens is uh, the most important thing in photography, not the camera. Never the camera. The camera is only to record what's on the lens. Then uh, in macro photography, one thing I suggest is uh, the heaviest stand you can afford because the vibration is uh, the mm, destroy you know a lot of images mm -hmm. and uh, the stands uh, we have a three stands uh, at the studio they are over 300 pounds each and the vibration even uh, the vibration of uh, the mirror of the camera that yes. goes up and down can create micro vibration of the is important in micro photography. Are you following this, Tim? Yeah. I, you, you, he's talking over my head. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, for those of you who didn't um, uh, quite get that, um, in SLR cameras, single lens reflex cameras, um, which means you can look right through the lens when you're setting up your, your shot, there's a mirror array that actually lets you do that. And what happens when you depress the shutter button to capture the image is that mirror snaps up out of the way. 
And in the course of that mechanical action of a mirror moving up and then returning, uh, it frankly does put vibrations through the camera body. And so what he is doing is he's attaching his camera to very heavy weights to eliminate that as much as possible. Wow. Is that right, Franco? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Nicely it done, is, uh, <laughs> You know, when uh, we shoot uh, at, uh, on our level, if you look at uh, um, the show part watch, all right. And uh, then uh, the request really? is uh, for the uh, Times Square. Show part. That'll be perfectly sharp. And All right, we're going to pull the watch. show part up there. Say, uh, say, okay, we're looking at the show part watch. Yes, and that's the camera that, uh, that's the image that he was referring to. Okay. Of this one? You were referring to this image when you were saying. Yeah, because. Uh, I mean, they might, uh, have to be really, really sharp. I mean, to use it for uh, a billboard, for uh, example. And uh, mm -hmm. when we do it for any photography, it has to be good for any type of media. So um, you cannot use it just for the Internet. It has to be used for anywhere. Hey, listen, if anybody out there, well, I'm only going to keep Angie and Frankie on the phone for a couple more minutes, but if anyone out there has a question, a photography question they want to ask for Frankie, uh, for Franco and Angie, give us a quick call uh, over the next minute or two. Uh, uh, Ronnie, was there any other pictures we had in there? I thought I loaded a couple more, no? Well, uh, There was a Sterling in there, no? Yeah, I did. I did put that sterling in there. It was a really nice camera. Oh set. yeah, the, it was the one in the in the email. The stuff in the email didn't come out, Angie. Yeah, so we didn't get it in there. Oh, we, what about the link? Well, I have a website that where all those images uh, all right. are. All Let's. What's, what is your website? Zerilli. Tell us your website. FrancescoZerilli dot com. All right, F R A N C E S C O. Z Z E R I L L I dot com. No, it's Francesco. C E S C O. C E S C O. Yeah. Z E R I L L I dot com. So it's Francesco is F R A N C E S C O. Yes. Right. Let's see if we can get that up on the screen. But anybody wants to check out uh, FrancescoZarelli.com, you guys have done some great work for us over the years, and I appreciate Thanks. your participation. I'm sorry we didn't coordinate it a little bit sooner, Angie. You know, and what I like about your setup, uh, Angie, with you two guys, is that uh, you know Francesco is you know the artist, but when it comes to the matters of the money, Angie handles everything. <laughs> It all goes through her. That's right. Well, the artist has to, the artist has to do his work, so I handle the business affairs. I know. Well, it doesn't matter the money for me. I have to do the same job for everybody. And you've done a great job for us. One of these days, I'll get out to your place. You're in Royal Oak, is that right? Royal Oak, and we'd love to have you. We'd love to have you visit the studio area. Yeah, I haven't been to your new studio yet. All right, uh, Tim, any final thoughts with Angie and Franco? Um, yeah, uh, just one I've been asking all of our guests this evening. Um, if you could address uh, the viewers that are just starting out in macro photography, watch photography, uh, what would you say is like the top one or two things as a seasoned professional uh, that you'd like to give them as tips? Well, um, uh I have a, uh, to tell the truth, um, I have a time, I mean, uh, why somebody that is doing amateur photography wanted to go into watch photography because it's a very tedious work, but it's a lot of work, you know, to achieve a, a, a really good picture. Um, I don't know. I, 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 I have... Um, uh, I will say, you know, the the direction uh, they should go is more into nude photography or landscape. You know, it's I think it's a lot more exciting than shooting watches. <laughs> so your advice is don't do it. <laughs> yeah, <but that's laughs> I mean, is that what you say? <laughs> but you know, under under a Angie and Franco, understand this. 
a lot of the guys that are watching, the, you know, the show tonight and have bar- been participating tonight, they're not really doing it because they want to go into business and make money from it. They're really watch enthusiasts. They buy their watches. They collect watches. And then as a hobby, they like to take pictures of their own watches for themselves, you know? So. Right. Right. I understand, Larry. I mean, it's not. I'm. I'm. I'm not. I think he's playing a little bit. <laughs> I think he's playing a little bit with you, too, though. But just uh, again, what Tim's question was. Um, any any tidbits? Uh, well, tidbits is equipment, and equipment is uh, really expensive, uh, and uh, basically whatever the. The main thing I will suggest is a very sturdy, heavy uh, tripod. I mean, for macro photography, you cannot shoot without a tripod. Without what? This is uh, my only... The teletripod. The first step, I will say. All right, okay. so a very a, a quality tripod. It's good, good advice. And lens. Fantastic. Well, listen, I hope to see you soon, Franco. Are you going? Are you guys going over to Basel? Uh, not this year. I'll, I'll let you know. Well, I'm hoping to go. I'm hoping to go. Are you going to be there, Larry? Uh, not sure yet if I'm going. It's uh, March 8th, I believe. But um, I did go last year. But um, if you do go to Basel, Angie, are you going to hang out more in the jewelry buildings or the watch buildings? I tell you what, you're... You know, each year it's different when I go to these shows. When I was in Vegas back in 2011, um, I I seem to spend most of my time in the jewelry end. Right. And I, the prior year, it, it, it just happened that I was more with the, the watches. So um, I, I'm hoping to do a little bit of both. I, I would personally think as far as you trying to, you know, pick up accounts and potential clients and so forth, just my own opinion. I think you guys would do better in the jewelry buildings over there in Basel than you do in the watch buildings. The watch, bu- the watch buildings. I mean, I love looking at the watches and all that, but it's like they're there to, you know, they're not that open to inviting people in. You know, they they have their appointments and they want to deal with their dealers and all that kind of stuff. You know, whereas in all the, right. you know, the jewelry buildings, they have some of the finest, you know, jewelry companies in the world are there. I love going in the jewelry buildings over there. I mean, you, all you have to do is say hi, and they're like, oh, come on in. We'll give you some tea and coffee and this. I mean, they invite you right in. It's not like in the watch buildings, you know? Yeah, it's a little bit different. And then you're in Switzerland, so that's, uh, there's a lot of uh, watch photography done over there as well. So. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so I, I probably will be visiting the jewelry end. <laughs> yeah, well, if I go, then I'll call you, and we'll try and coordinate. Okay, sounds good. Hey, thank you for having us. Oh, thanks for thank you. Thanks for participating, Franco. Well, thank you for all the great work too. Hey, thank you. And all right. Great watching your show, Larry. Oh, cool. Well, you know, it's only going to get better. Well, congratulations on it. Thanks, Angie. Take care now. Take care. Bye. All right. Bye, Tim. Bye. Bye. Good night. Bye. He does phenomenal work. Yeah, that was, you know. that was that was uh, that was funny because. We asked him, you, you had a great question. Do you have any tips? <laughs> don't it, do it. <laughs> <laughs> it sounded like he was saying it's a lot of work. I don't know why anybody would want to do it. You know? But, uh, you know, he, I think it's a labor of love, honestly. But I, I yeah. think when you were dealing with, with watch guys, the love's already there. Yeah. So you just want to get good at it. Yeah, and then they're not looking to you know start a business out yeah. of it. They just, you just want, shoot they just shoot. Want beautiful yeah. pictures of their watches. Absolutely. But uh, some good, you know, I mean, I couldn't believe the way you were following him. You know, I mean, you obviously, you know, know the cameras and stuff. I had no idea what he was talking about with mirrors and all that kind of stuff. That's that's crazy stuff. Yeah, it's in there. All right. Uh, let's see. I know we've got a few people out there still waiting. Um, let's Line give, them up. Let's, cool. give, let's give Joe Capote a call because Joe, he, Joe gave us a, a Skype name. Now, he's still on the East Coast. It's after 1 in the morning. Let's see if he's still with us. This is up in uh, New Hampshire. He's got a Skype uh, name. Let's see if we can get a hold of Joe if he's still with us. And I think we have three or four pictures of his uh, lined up. Let's see if he's on there. Joe, are you on the phone? He's probably sleeping. We probably. Okay. Hey, Joe. Joe. Hey, guys. Hey. hey. Welcome to the show, Joe. I bet you thought we were never going to get to you. No, now, I'm, just, I'm just waking up now. No, I, actually, it's been a great show. <laughs> Thank okay. you. Okay. Now, do, we don't have his video Skype going, do we? No, I tried calling him on video Skype, but he's got his normal. 
Okay, so we could your video Skype's not working, Joe? No, I have it on. Did you get our uh, request to add us uh, to add us in? Yeah, hold on. Do we have to call him back too? No, hold on for a moment. Well, no. Once you answer the phone, you you, you can't switch it. No, I don't think so. All right, let's see. Uh, let's something's see. Something's going on here. Something's coming. There we go, guys. Let's see. I'm at, I'm on. Yeah, well, we're not getting it yet. We're, we're it's working on it. It looks like it's trying. Hang tough. We may have to call him back, Ronnie. All right, we're going to hang right, we're up. Calling you right back, we're Joe. calling you right back with the video right. Skype. Let's see if we can get a video. If not, we'll take the regular call. You know, he might not have answered it, you know, done the yeah. video answer. No, Joe, we're not getting it. There, there it is. is. We got you. <laughs> All right. Yeah. All right. All right. We got you, Joe. You All got right, let's you, do this. You got us okay? Yeah. All yeah. right. Great. Well, thanks for uh, staying up. Uh, and on, on Watch Geeks, you're known as Watch Jack. Is that right? That's right. All right. Tim, take over. All right, uh, where to begin? Um, all right, let's start with some basic stuff, man. When you're shooting uh, watches, uh, what do you like gear-wise? What do you do? Well, gear-wise, I bought a couple of years ago. I bought this. Uh, I bought a Pentax K20D, 14.6 megapixel, and uh, you know it, it's been a great camera. But you know, your last um, caller was saying that uh, as far as um, equipment was concerned that it wasn't as big a deal and i gotta agree because i just recently bought a lens a um a, a um a prime lens a pentax prime lens mm -hmm. and uh, man what a difference wow. i mean the, the camera takes some phenomenal pictures already but yeah i i, I agree man. if you go to you know if you have to pick put your money in the lens cool can we uh, maybe get a, a PIP with uh, with Watch Jack and his shots? Now, this shot here, tell us about this shot. What is this? Uh, well, actually, this one's using the, the new lens that I got. And, and uh, Okay. As you can know, the thing about this lens is it, it creates, and I may not be putting this term incorrectly, it's called a Vulcan effect where you get a softening of the image around it um, kind of a blurring effect. It's very pleasing to the eye. Around, are you saying around the outer uh, edges of the frame? Right, and and whatever is not in focus, you can you can bring it in as tight. In some of my other photos, you may see it a little more. Um, and now the term is called bokeh. B o k e h. I, I don't know. You know? I, I actually, that's one I'm not uh, familiar with. But and you're saying the lens is doing that, not the camera body. No, that's right. That's the lens. Okay. Oh, I just learned something. I didn't know. Now the these lens shots could do that. That, are these outdoors. They look like they're outdoors. Yes. I, I, I uh, lighting. I haven't had a whole lot of success with, and I'm I'm really an amateur at this, and um, so I do a lot of the stuff outside, and uh, whatever the. Whenever the weather is right, and uh, I think it's a beautiful day for it, I get out there and I, you know, I photograph. So, do you use? Uh, uh, are you a, a fan of direct lighting? Do you use indirect lighting? Um, do you create like? Do you put uh, shades up? How do you how do you set up your lighting? Well, that's interesting because um, it depends. Uh, if I if it's a day where there's a lot of light, like maybe the middle of the day, mm -hmm. I'll use a light tent. To soften the to soften the light a little bit. Yeah. Now, is this your watch? This Parallel? Yes, it is. So nice you, you grab. So, so you go for the expensive stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Parallel is not cheap. Uh, yeah, no, and, and, and you know, someday I'll tell you the story behind this one. But let's just say I didn't pay what you know the MSRP on this one. Okay. okay. A guy owed you some money and he gave you the watch. Huh? <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. Well, you know, uh, you were one of the, also one of the early guys that uh, came in and uh, decided, you know, helped us uh, by participating in the show. So, you know, I really appreciate that. Uh, do you have anything for Tim or myself? Yeah. Um, you know, more than anything else, as far as the programs are concerned, I've been using Corel Photoshop as, 
for the post production. And I also have a very expensive Adobe kit, um, program, which I really haven't used at all. Um, what what's your impression between the two? Do you you know you prefer one as opposed to the other? Um, all right. First of all, uh, I, I, the, the first one that you mentioned, I, I have not used, um, I grew up in Photoshop, so I'm currently using, uh, the full suite of, uh, Adobe Photoshop. I think I'm on CS5 okay. and I have looked at, uh, Aperture, uh, Lightroom. I think I've, I've got a, um, like a light copy of Lightroom. Um, I actually got into Lightroom, if, if, if I'm using the name correctly, because they have an orange filter. And last year I shot uh, some of my big landscape stuff I did in, the, in Utah. And if you're going to shoot the desert in Utah, everything's orange anyway. So it really helped to have a, a, a computer program that spoke orange, which for those of you who don't know, Photoshop doesn't do that. You have to balance reds and yellows. Um, so I got into it for that reason and it worked great, but I, and also for their black and white filters are unbelievable. So I, I do dig it for that. Um, but I'm, I'm a Photoshop guy, man. I like, um, uh, the mask. I like, um, uh, if you go down, if you know Photoshop, you go to that lower, at least on my screen, it's, uh, the lower uh, right hand corner and you hit what looks like the, uh, the yin yang. Uh, symbol, and then you can um, do some really cool filter stuff inside of that, and you, I run a real light um, uh, blur over that, and you get some fantastic uh, uh, kind of shading results with that, um, which I know makes no sense whatsoever to anybody since we can't see it on the screen. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I'm a Photoshop guy, um, and that's not to say the other programs aren't, aren't amazing, and I've seen great production coming out of the one, the, the Corel, which I've not used, but I've seen some cool stuff. Aperture's great, Lightroom's great. Um, I just grew up early. Once I got into digital, I, I was in Photoshop, and I, kept, I just kept it. Well, to, to, be, to be honest with you, I started out with the Corel Photoshop version, and I later got the Adobe Photoshop version, and it's just sitting there in my computer because it's a little more intimidating than the the um, than the other. Than the other. Yeah, the Corel. You know, my my advice to guys on on that, and I get asked that like in the, like my recording studio and so on too, is that uh, use what works, man. I mean, there's some really cool tools. Corel's an excellent program, and if you're getting the results that that rock you, use Corel. You know, I use Photoshop because I grew up with it. Um, if I had grown up with Corel, if I'd grown up on on Lightroom or Aperture sooner, honestly, I'd be in there instead of uh, Photoshop. Um, I didn't pick Photoshop because it's the you know the big 800 pound gorilla. I mean, it, I just happened to have it. I uh, had access to it. Ended up buying into it. Um, but uh, yeah, use what works, man. You know, um, I think your advice is dead on. Put your money in the lens. And um, my advice along those lines, which you didn't ask, but is um, I found it made night and day. When I first started watch photography, I did not have a macro lens. Um, I actually did it for a while using a telephoto lens, where I'd back the camera way off, and I was actually shooting like a telescope. And I got some interesting results with that. And once in a while, I'll still pull one of my nice tellies. Uh, but macro lens makes all the difference, man, as you point out. You know, good lens. Yeah, no, it, that's, again, I... Um I didn't put a whole lot of stock in listening tonight. I picked up a lot of tips that, um, I, you know, I think I found a love with this. I, I, you know, that I that I hadn't. It's like a, I call it a the, my third love. My my first one years ago, I worked for cruise lines and so on. But um, other than that, um, you know, then the wife. And well, yeah, that. yeah. At some point, <laughs> sure, sure. That. Get in the that next in there. Room, you know, <laughs> good. Is she, is she standing nearby? She's in the next room, so what up? I, just make sure in case she's still up, you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's right. She might think you're talking to somebody, you know, talking to another girl. I listen, you know, we're getting really late. Thanks so much, Joe. Joe, you've been great, man. I'm Thank gonna, you. I'm going to look for your post, nice you work. know, Watch Jack. Nice on, parallel, uh, by Geeks. the way. And, Thanks, uh, guys. Thank I, you. I, I love the fact that you had video Skype. I want everybody to have video Skype. That makes it a lot more fun when we video can Video Skype when, for all. When we can see who we're talking to. That's Demand really it. cool. I tell you, you didn't, you didn't ask, but the, you know the one thing, the one tip I would leave. I take oh yeah, lots Please. of photos. Um, I, you know, I take the same shot over and over again. Um, you know, like I hold the button down and just because I find that you may get a shot with where the lighting hits the watch and it's in just the, the, that the right is, way. That's that's a really cool tip. Like I it. do that too sometimes, where it, because I've noticed even because I you know I've got the like Nikon it. and a big. 
whatevers and blah, blah, blah. You know what? You shoot a bunch of those things, I hit it in just like machine gun. Like, da, 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 da. And there is subtle lighting differences where one shot just stands out. I yeah, like that. Absolutely right, man. It's digital. Shoot as many as you want. That's right. No, no film that you have yeah, to Yeah, you'll make by. more. So, I did. Thank it. you, guys. Thank you very much, Joe. Thank you, Joe. Thank you so much. Peace, peace. That's a great tip, and I, you know, having grown up on on film, I Just can attest to. I still br try to break the habit because in film I was always nursing the film, yep. and it, oh yeah, I'm in digital. I can shoot as much as I want, you know, and just go All nuts. Right. Now we got two more guys on the East Coast, and it's real late back there. I got Nismo yeah, and, I, and I got George G. Marino. Which one do you want to go first? Um, Nismo is next on the list. I yeah, but Nismo, Nismo will probably stay up a little later right, than George Emer. George, George is, I think, George I think we're past his bedtime. But All right. I'm, jo I'm, I'm, I'm jo joking around. Let's get George G. Marino on the phone. And then Nismo, you're next. Nismo gave us some nice shots. Let's see what George gave us. All right, check it out. Here we go. And George, by the way, on Watch Geeks is known as George the Watch Guy. I think he might even be one of Mike's moderators or something. I'm... Um, could be. I, I think so. Good. Let's see if we can get him on the phone. <laughs> Let's see here. We're calling. And that's the last one that had video Skype, by the way. Four, nine. Oh, okay. George, the watch guy, must be asleep. We might give him a try one more time, but let's, let's see if we can get Nismo. Maybe we can uh, rattle him out of bed. I asked these guys, give me your first name or whatever, and Nismo says, I'm Nismo. Everybody knows me as Nismo. So, okay, right. that's all he wants I to give. I guess we're going to find out. All right, but I like his shots. He gave us some nice shots. And he's in Hamilton, Michigan, I believe. His wife will probably answer the phone and say, are you crazy? It's 1 o'clock oh, in the hey, morning. Yeah. Nismo, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. Are you, so you stayed up for us. Oh, I'm a, I'm a late night guy, so all right, it's cool. early for me. Now, this is Nismo from Watch Geeks. Um, now, Nismo, you actually you sent us some really nice shots. Uh, let's see if we can get some of those. Tim, do you know Nismo? I, do, I don't believe I do. All right, well, I'll let you handle it. Look at this. Look at this shot. That's a beautiful shot. Now, that's what is that, an Invicta? Is that, what is that, I call it I-Force or Coalition or something like that? What is that? That's the Coalition um, Bolt. It was the hybrid Coalition Forces Bolt, and it's a titanium, and it's on the poly strap. So just a fun shot with a lot of textures, a lot of light play with, with everything going on with the details. So it was fun. Um, uh, let's start with some basic stuff. Uh, in, in What gear uh, did you use for the shot? Um, I'm a, just an amateur guy, so um, I just use a very old Sony CyberShot. And it's basically a handheld point-and-shoot, no lenses, no... That's handheld? LSRs. Yep. That's a fantastic handheld shot. So uh, did... Do you have any control over your f-stop, or did that thing just throw the uh, the background out of balance like that? Um, no, there is um, there are automatic modes. You know, you can shoot landscape, panoramic, close-up portraits, and this was just kind of the generic close-up shot. And um, it's all, you know, I'm an amateur, so just kind of point and shoot and uh, I, I play think, with the light. No, I got to tell you, I think the lighting on this is is beautiful. I think your use of focus versus the um, the background thrown in, into out of focus is really wonderful. Yeah, it gives a nice depth of field. No doubt. More character, you know, he, so. he keeps saying he's an amateur, but where do you see these shots, Tim? I'm finding this hard these, to these believe. These are beautiful shots. I, Look at this. That's a point and shoot. Yep, it's, a, it's about a seven or eight-year-old point and shoot. It's like a seven megapixel. So you, dude, you you have the eye. And and I've been listening to the show all night, and everybody talks about light, and that's not to be a broken record, but light is the key. All right, what's your secret to light? What do you like? What do you, what do you do? I shoot everything outdoors. I have no light kits. I have no strobes, no flash. I shoot everything natural light outside. So. Do and you um do you put up like anything to diffuse the light? Are you shooting oh, definitely, hard? What definitely, definitely. What what do you I, like for a diffuser? Um, I use, believe it or not, just a black piece of cardboard, and I use that kind of on a kind of a teepee pattern mm -hmm. to let light in from the front, yeah, but not escape the back. And then I can raise the back up or down to let more light in, so that I can capture depth of field by bringing the light into the back of the picture. Now, see, I have no idea what you guys are talking about. He says a black cardboard shaped like a teepee? Yeah, he's using it to, <laughs> he blocks off light he doesn't want. So he puts the, right. the black 
cardboard over the watch? Possibly. Yep. Yep. No, just kind of raised up above. Above. I shoot on a lot of different backgrounds. So I shoot on like marble and slate and glass. Yeah, your backgrounds so are gorgeous. Do, do you, when, are those just outside, or do you kind of plan that and carry something out there? How does that work? No, I have a dedicated space I shoot outside at. So, um, and then I just change the background. Like that's just a piece of frosted glass, and there's some black slate. I, I have to, I, I tell I got to tell you I, I think your shots are blow away. Uh, th- these are these are beautiful shots. Mm-hmm. Uh, what do you do for post production, if anything? Um, Photoshop. Yeah. So, what's your tricks in Photoshop? What do you like? Um, well, I get I get a lot of tips and questions on Watch Geeks, and um, Photoshop is helpful. But if your shot isn't good to begin with, Photoshop isn't going to fix it. Oh, oh, it'll I get, agree. You got it. it. You know, composition right. is composition. Now, can, time right. out. Time out, everybody. <laughs> um, I, I told everybody, you know, not like if they sent me wrist shots, I told them, you know, I'm not taking wrist shots, but. To me, just like that other one with the cigar, mm-hmm. this is not a wrist shot. I'm sorry. This this is a lifestyle shot. Yeah, it's a beautiful shot. It happens to be a, a wrist is in it. Yeah, I mean, you got the leather jacket. you got the stick shift of the car. you got the ripped jeans or whatever that is over there. Guy's driving his sports cars. Is that your, that's your hand, right? Yeah, that's me, my car. Yep. I mean, that, that's a lifestyle shot. No doubt. And if you think it's easy shooting a, a 52 millimeter Invicta, Inside a car with surrounded by four glass windows, not very, not very easy to do. How did you? I mean, I'm just gonna get. I mean, <laughs> is that just indirect? Did you like put a white sheet over the windshield, or? Um, I do put a little bit over the front because otherwise it gets really washed out and blown up. Because yeah. that's where the most light comes in. So yeah, you, you play with that to cover part of the windshield because the windshield also reflects the mirror, and the mirror is gonna leave a mirror-shaped shadow. Yeah. So you gotta. Yeah, yeah, it's a good point. Do, do you uh, do you shift color color balance in 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 Photoshop? Or what, what what do you go in there for? Um, mainly to get rid of dust. Mm-hmm. That's mean, my number one. <laughs> I mean, you can clean your most of my watches are black or have black IP or gunmetal. Mm-hmm. But even the stainless ones, I mean, if you use a microfiber microfiber or and then you blow it, blow the dust off, mm-hmm. you're still going to have some traces. So, yeah, you almost. Inevitably, you have to remove some of that. But yeah, I'll, I'll, I, I mean, I don't hesitate to uh, to change color balance or change, you know, play with anything in Photoshop to enhance the, the image. Yeah, I, I'm I'm of the same attitude. I I, uh, I I view Photoshop as the extension of the raw image. Um, it it's it, it's like a different brush or a different palette for a for a painter for an artist to use. It, it, to right. me, it's a tool. I don't use it as an excuse. And and to your point, I, I think if your original shot isn't in the camera, Photoshop is going to take a mediocre shot and maybe make it marginally better. Uh, but a, a, you know, if you have a great sense of composition and you've developed that sense and you bring it into Photoshop, uh, you can do some pretty amazing stuff. I like this shot too. You got like a toy model car in the background. See that right there? Nismo is the guy on Watch Geeks that has that avatar that kind of looks like a pirate. Mm-hmm. You know, you know. So what? <laughs> um, what made you think of the, uh, the? Do you like? I'm going to mention this because of that car shot. Um, sure. Did you know you were going to do that before you went out there, or did you get into the shot and were, hey, you know what we need is a toy car in the background? Well, I photograph every watch that I, as soon as the watch comes in, it's delivered. I try to photograph it before I wear it. And since I photograph virtually every watch I get, you got to keep it fresh, do mm-hmm. something new, and then predominantly shoot on a black background. And with a combat watch on a black background, I wanted some other color, and I collect die cast more than I collect watches. So Is that I've got, right? I've got tons of stuff to choose from. I'm a car guy, car guy, watch guy. So, And um, that worked really well because on my black background, it also reflected into the back background. Wow. So it just brought another element to give it a little more life. Yeah, I mean, you can see the reflection of the yellow car, you right. know, uh, in, in the uh, whatever that is, slate or marble or yep. whatever. Slate. slate. Believe it or not, the, um, the die cast car costs more than the watch. Wow. Oh, <laughs> well, I believe so, it. So you should be shooting the car. What, what are these cars? Are they like 124th scale or something like that? No, this is actually 112th. One twelfth, okay. So it's pretty big. Yeah, pretty wow. big. So it's okay. twice as big as the one twenty four. See, that's that car is actually sitting quite a ways back then. 
Yeah, well, Nismo, listen, I, I hate to cut it short because, uh, you know, the, um, but we are late. Oh, no problem, guys. There's a few more people. You, any final uh, tip for everybody? Yeah, tips those, for the new guys. For the, anybody who's still watching, we still are, you know, have a pretty good audience out there. Um, don't be afraid. I hear a lot of guys saying that they're afraid to do Photoshop or they're afraid they're intimidated. I mean, you can't make any mistakes. Just have fun. I mean, it's supposed to be fun, so yeah. don't be afraid. Don't be. You're not going to make a mistake, so if you do, it's easy to take yeah, another just, shot. Yeah, All right, cool. Take the mistake out. All right. Thank you so much. You, you are a very uh, talented photographer, by the way, may I say. I, oh, I, I so really like your work. Well, thanks, Tim, and, and, and following in your footsteps, that's a good thing to know. That's, that's <laughs> kind of you to say. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Right, thank, thank you for sharing thanks, with Tim. us. Thanks, Nismo. Okay. okay. All right. Listen, we're, we're trying to roll through here. Um, we're going to give George one more chance. George, the watch guy, give him one more chance, right. Ronnie. And while you're dialing up George, let me make a call out here to uh, Big Noise. Now, that's S. Parker. I asked you like three, four times. I needed your phone number so we could call you. You never gave me your number, man. So if you're watching the show, Big Noise, you gave us some, a few nice pictures and we've got them in the system, give us a call on that studio number that you see at the bottom there, 310, and we'll get you in on that way instead of us calling you. Because you never did give me your number on that big noise. His name is S. Parker. So, um, you know, if you want to get in, give us a call right away on that 310 number. Now, did George answer? All right, George is out. You want to just show a couple of his watches, uh, a couple of his shots, Ronnie? It's George Giamarino. We'll just flash a couple of his shots really quick. Because I thought he had some nice shots. I, I really did. We just uh, took too long. I mean, look at this. That's a nice shot. It's a great shot. I mean, you know, I, I don't know what his tricks are. Go ahead, Ronnie. Just roll through. He didn't call in, but he's doing that, you know, dark background. Thing. Yeah, very austere. A nice loom. Oh, this uh, this he oh, sent a picture a of the camera that he's using. 7.1 megapixel. And here's his final shot he gave us. But that was from George the Watch Guy. Sorry that we took too long and he's probably sleeping. Uh, so he's out. And big noise, again, if you're watching, call us in on the studio line on 310. And, Ronnie, while well, you're going to – the next guy up is uh, – now we're moving west a little bit. We're going to go to Montana. Let's go for Rising Wolf. That's Dave Fitzpatrick. And while you're trying to get him on the line – uh, I want to make one final call out uh, for the uh, free giveaway for the uh, gold earrings with the sapphires. So uh, I know, <laughs> Ronnie, I, I know you're just one guy. But uh, here it is. Uh, this will be another call out here. In order to win the earrings, now is the time. You're going to send in an email to contact at acorn.tv. And in the um, subject line, you must put the secret word, which is pinky. Put Pinky in the, in the subject line. In the body of the email, you must put your first name, last name, city, and state. And um, now will be the time. You've got five minutes to get your uh, your entries in. And then uh, I don't think we'll do any more call-outs after that. And let's see if we can get Rising Wolf. That's his uh, name on uh, Watch Geeks. We're going to see if we can get him on the line. Now, he was the one that texted me before the show that he had an emergency and he said, don't call me early if I make it back in time. Let's see if he made it back. Now, he's in uh, Charlotte, Montana. And if he doesn't answer, we've got a couple more people to call. We'll try coming back to him. You know, while we're setting up these calls, I, I just want to say, if I can for a moment, uh, thank you, yeah. everybody that participated uh, in this. Um, we, we've had a tremendous amount. There's more on the list. And it, it seems pretty obvious we should do this again sometime. I'll tell you, man, it's, cool. it's, it's, it's cool interacting. I just wish everybody had video Skype. Yeah, well, we're working on it. Get the word out, Larry. <laughs> yeah, get video Basic Skype. Basic Skype is free. Go download it. It, it is yeah. free. You just got to have a webcam. Yeah. And a, and a microphone, or, you know, you can do the headset thing, or a lot of the computers have the mic built in. Yeah, but uh, you guys that took the effort, you sent it. Do we have picture, Rising Wolf on the phone? Cool. Yeah, hello. Hi. Dave, you made it back. Uh, yeah, I, in, I, in the snow. <laughs> I, I got your um, email. Just before the show, saying you had to go do a, what, a, a, are you an EMT or something? Yeah, I'm an EMT, yeah, just a, a volunteer. Wow. And uh, I hope you helped uh, do somebody some good tonight. Oh, yeah, we, we try to. So things went well. You know, I've seen your shots for a long time. You and I have spoken, I think, going back probably five years, Dave. 
right. And right. Uh, at least five years. And I find your shots to be some of the most intriguing shots because you do, I mean, your watch shots are cool. I, I love your watch shots, but your nature shots are just like, they're like postcards. They're incredible. Well, they're, well, I've been lucky. I volunteer up in Glacier Park in the summer and at the National Bison Range here in the winter. So, you Have know, you when you're in nature the shots? No, I've not, but now I've got to see them. country. Tim. I his, might be shooting Glacier later this year, so we got to talk. Oh, you got, if, oh, you're, yeah. if you're going yeah. to Montana, you got to get together with Dave because his his nature shots are like oil paintings. I mean, they're incredible, incredible. Uh, well, here's a sterling watch. I know you like the pocket watches too. Yeah, yeah. I thought I'd brown nose the uh, you know you and had all the sterling <laughs> shots. <laughs> you know, this is an interesting one because this is a, a watch that you know we we only made one production run of it and that was it. And uh, mm -hmm. the people who got them really like them, but you know we didn't we never made more of them. It's, and it's a large piece. It's the Chernabog. Anyway, Tim, you got uh -huh. something for Dave? Yeah, Dave, I noticed that you are, are pulling uh, some really intricate backgrounds, and I was wondering what's your uh, approach to doing that? Oh, <laughs> well, I just have a bunch of, I have a kind of a window I take the pictures in, and I get a bunch of knickknacks. Uh, as you can see with the three watches there, that's just a plate that we have. Um, the one, of, you can see the grizzly bear claw. Yes. Um, yeah, that one is a, a big grizzly that they trapped uh, east of uh, the Continental Divide, and they made a track of it. So, uh, so it's like I a plaster kind right, of Right, it's, it's a cast yeah. right, of it. So it's just a variety of different things that I try to use. Um, you know, try to make, the, make it different. Well, that's what I was about to say. I mean, it seems to me immediately with, with your photography, what I'm seeing setting it apart is that you're using... Um, I almost want to use the term really aggressive, wonderful uh, backgrounds. Right, right. Just, you know, I like nature. You know, I work in it most of the time, so I try to have that in all my shots. Do you do you find it difficult to balance the, um, uh, how am I trying to say this, uh, to, from keeping the, the, the shot getting too cluttered? I mean, you have an interesting background, but it never seems to overpower the, the foreground. Do you have a, uh, a thought or a technique to that, or does it just kind of happen for you? Well, that's what cropping is for, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, that's a good answer. So, yeah, I use Lightroom and uh, you know for just some small stuff, but basically I just take the part of the picture I think is nice and get rid of the rest. Yeah, I'm a believer in cropping as well. So do you, do you shoot wide and then you're, you're really going for a core in the uh, shot later? No, I've got uh, most of them are almost with a macro. I've got... I use a Canon 7D, and then I've got the 100 millimeter macro. Yeah, there we are, 100 millimeter and a macro. 52. So, you know, those. So I try to get as close as I can, um, so the quality's there, and then try to take out the, you know, whatever, whatever I don't want. Do you have a favorite f-stop or any settings like that, or does it uh, uh, vary? It, it varies. You know, go if I need the, you know, big depth of field, I try f8 or f, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but it just depends on the light. Uh, you know, using just the sunlight, uh, you know, that varies from minute to minute. So we take advantage of it. Well, I know these the uh, few watch the few pictures you sent us was just a small, you know, this uh, part of your watch pictures because I've over the years right. I've seen you do quite a few. Right. Um, right. I, I, now I know I I didn't want any nature shots or anything like that, but I saw you post these on on Watch Geeks and I could not resist. Oh. Uh, check this out. What are we looking at, Dave? Uh, oh, that's a snowy owl. They they I, they're all over the north. I don't know if you have them in Minnesota now. Or yeah, not. we do actually. Uh, but I was just this is about a mile from the house and it was sitting on a telephone pole, so I got some pictures. <laughs> Just this was just a couple of days ago. Wow! So how close you get? That was I assume with the telephoto. Uh, I was just right. Yeah, I was using. I think this. I had a. I've got the seventy to two hundred. Yeah. Think this was about one fifty. Um, That's still not. You know, so wow. Are, yeah. Good range. Yeah. When yeah when you can get right underneath this one didn't fly off for two or three minutes. Yeah, some of those guys they don't they don't really mind you being around them so much. No, I know it. They're. I think they get probably more pictures taken of them than almost anything else so yeah i, remember I shot yellowstone i remember i was shooting a, a bear at one point and the bear could not have cared less and it was very obvious that this was just part of his life 
Uh-huh. Yeah, there's another, you know, Nimrod with a camera. You know, it's like, all right, well, let's do this. Yeah. Yeah. I'm pretty leery of those things after working in the parks for so long because they're, they're quicker than we are. All right. Dave. Oh, I did it from a car. <laughs> <laughs> you were smart. Yeah. All right. Listen, Dave. Uh, again, I'm so sorry the show has run so long. I'm gonna I'm gonna okay. call it up here. But any final word, final tip? What do you got? Yeah, for beginners. Well, I think. Well, if you look at my picture, that's Yellowstone too, with uh, the petrified tree behind me. So. Anyway, no, I think just enjoy nature and try to, when you take pictures, um, look at the big and the small. I, I guess that's the thing I like to do. Cool. All right. Great job. Dave, thanks, Dave, man. Thanks Pleasure. For, thanks for participating. Um, it, it, one of these days, if I get to Montana, I'd love to meet you. Uh, oh. Your, your nature shots are outrageous. Yeah, yeah. And, Tim, if you uh, are coming out here, let me know. I'll I count on that. I, I love working with the locals because you guys know all the little secret places. Well, I've been in Glacier since 74, so I know it pretty well. Count on it. Thank you for the offer, and I I will take you up on that. Okay. Thank you, sir. Thanks, Dave. Good evening, guys. Thank you, You Dave. You too. Thank you very much, Dave. All right, we got two left. Let's try and knock them out. It's getting late, and, you know, we got Ginger out there, and, you know, she's getting tired. Uh, Okay, let's, let's go now to the West Coast. We got two on the West Coast. We got Brad and Ryan. Let's go with Brad now. We're just going to save Ryan to wrap it up. Uh, if we can, and on the West Coast, it shouldn't be too bad. It's probably only no, that's uh, fine. It's like eleven. Eleven o'clock there. Yeah. I think if we do something like this again, Tim, we got to do like a special uh, whatever, like a Saturday night thing, and start at like. I'd love to. Like yeah, we'll do it earlier. We'll do like it on a, Saturday. A, and, like a seven p.m. And we'll definitely start East Coast and sweep across. Yeah, we got to start like <laughs> seven p.m., which would be here, which would be eight p.m. Yeah, there instead sure. of starting at love eleven. To. Uh, let's see if we can get Brad Landon on the phone. He sent us a basket full of shots here. I, I cut it down to 10, but let's see here. Brad, are you with us? I am with you. Hi, All right. Brad. Nice to – nice to. Uh, are you, so you've been watching the whole time? I have uh, been here since the opening bell. Wow. wow. Thank you for that. Thank you, Brad. Uh, again, thanks for – welcome to the show. Thanks for participating uh, you had some really nice shots, and uh, you look at this loom shot he's got coming up, Tim. Tim, take it away. Um, okay, uh, Brad, um, uh, two questions. One, uh, can you go over the basic gear that, that you use? And two, what's your approach, your technique for shooting uh, loom? Like this one, for example, um, obviously has a lot of detail in it beyond just being a loom shot. Well, um, I, I actually started uh, uh, amateur photography when I was, 13, my first camera was an Argus C3. I don't think you go wow. quite that far back no, then. I don't know that one. Yeah. <laughs> my first was the actual brownie. <laughs> and uh, I started processing uh, uh, my own shots by 16 and uh, had 35 millimeter medium format and so forth. So I've, I've always had an interest in photography. And uh, uh, at a a point in time when I started uh, collecting watches uh, about uh, 10 years ago and uh, frequenting the forums, I thought it would be fun to start taking pictures. I had uh, uh, Nikon Digital SS, uh, SLR, the, the D70, mm-hmm. and thought that would be great and had all sorts of, uh, of trouble with it uh, in terms of getting the shots I wanted. And someone else on one of the forums told me that uh, what you need is a, a real inexpensive Canon point-and-shoot. They do wonderful work. And I have been using a Canon point-and-shoot for my watch photography ever since. And it's an uh, SD790IS. It's we'll discontinued to. now, 10.1 megapixel. Uh, it does. Uh, it can get really close. It takes great macro shots. Yeah, there's a picture of the camera I see there. And uh, uh, I use a light tent. Uh, when I first started shooting, I tried uh, using the artificial light with the full spectrum, et cetera, et cetera, and uh, uh, that gave me fits too. So what I do is I, uh, I have the light tent on a table in a room with natural light, mm-hmm. and I drape the light tent with uh, essentially large uh, black bath towels to either include or exclude the amount of light that I want to need for the, the shot in question. 
So you're starting, it sounds like just like, the, I assume then a white light tent, and then you, you mute that with a black uh, uh, bath towel just moving it around. Yeah, I, I, I drape it to, depending on how much light I want, what kind of re, uh, reflection or shadows that, that I want. And uh, the, the way I control the camera, obviously a point-and-shoot uh, doesn't have all the, uh, the capability of an SLR, and I either force it to uh, 100 ISO or mm -hmm. 200. And uh, it takes care of the, the aperture, of course. Yeah, oh, so uh, an it, automatic it, setting, yeah. Yeah, based on whatever uh, ISO that I, nice. that I force it to. So this is a, um, quite a shot you did there on the, uh, on, on the loom, especially given the point and shoot. Well, the, the, the loom is a lot of fun, and uh, I charge them with a, with a UV light. Mm -hmm. On this one on this Orient, this is their new loom dial. And uh, the thing is like the bat signal. It just lights up so, so well. And that's completely unretouched. That was just shooting it the way it is. Wow. Now, that's not a Shop NBC brand. No, no, no. Orient is not. No. Where did you pick that one up? Uh, from Orient Watch USA. Okay. Yeah. Nice dial. And uh, I, have a, I have a lot of fun doing it. And uh, I could be because of all the pictures I've taken in the past. I seem to have a pretty good knack for it as well. Yeah, you sent me a lot more. I, I narrowed it down to about ten. I don't think I gave anybody else ten. I think I, <laughs> <laughs> I, I gave you the most, Brad. So I have a, I have a question for you, Brad. Uh, you, uh, you're getting some really clear dial shots, uh, but given that's a, that it's a point and shoot, I, I take it you're not using a polarizing filter. It, uh, you're, I, I, I guess you're not. very careful with lighting. Uh, the, the, the reflections, uh, first of all, um, it, it, it's very important to get the, the right angle against the dial. And then in addition to uh, the, the, the drape that I have over the top, uh, depending on, on, on how, the, how the light is hitting the light box, I will take a, a, another, another black drape or towel, whatever you want to call it, mm -hmm. and I will stand somewhat back from the box and hold it at a particular mm -hmm. angle. If there was an errant reflection still coming in, uh, I eliminate it. Smart. That's a great tip, by the way, for everybody out there. Can you repeat that, Tim? Um, yeah, basically, and I take it you, you, uh, you're doing some test shots and then you see you know, that so-and-so needs to be corrected? Well, actually, I, I can pretty much tell what it's going to look like just by uh, just just by looking at it through the, uh, the LCD on the back. Wow, I can't. I honestly, I, I have to do a couple of test shots, and then I go in and go, okay, I see it now, and fix yeah, it. Yeah, and that uh, that one Android shop that you asked me about at the beginning, uh, that deep dial, that that was uh, that that one came out really nice. Uh, yeah, and this one. A lot of that was just due to the. Uh, the white dial and and wing uses super luminova, so you get that charged and it's a win win. So that is, um, I, I I'm guessing then you let at least some light into the into the tent, obviously, to get the rest of that. Uh, yeah, and what I do with loom shots, if you if if you looked at any of my um, my threads on on Watch Geeks, I do a series of four shots from. Uh, a lighted uh, lighted watch or as much light as I want in the box, mm -hmm. and then I stage the loom down to total blackness. So it goes through a, a, a various stages, and that's all controlled by draping the light box. And of course, I use a tripod. I use a two-second delay, I, uh, so that the, the the camera is releasing the shutter. It's not my finger, um, yeah. and I. I Clean the watches. I, I just use a, uh, a microfiber uh, cloth, though. I don't use any uh, cleaning compound. Uh, uh, post production, I, I use uh, a Corel Paint Shop, mm -hmm. uh, Paint Shop Pro X4. I, I use it for dust, as you said. There's. Uh, I also uh, I can adjust uh, uh, highlights and uh, and light levels if it didn't come out uh, just right and. Um, you know, there's uh, clarify functions. I, I don't use sharpen too much, but uh, uh, that's available as well. And of course, to crop the shots too. Sure. Well, your results are beautiful. I thank you for sharing them with us. All right. Listen again. Uh, it's getting really late here, and um, you know, it's uh, one of the two in the morning on the East Coast now. So, again, uh, thanks so much, Brad. Thanks for hanging in there to the end. I'm sorry we couldn't spend a little bit more time. 
any final uh, you know tips for those out there that are still with us? Well, you know, I, I think I, I pretty much ran ran through them. You uh, mm -hmm. get a camera that has good macro capability, and frequently uh, a cheaper point and shoot is actually going to give you more bang for the buck than a digital SLR. I had a great Nikon, and it was a pain in the butt. Uh, uh, people mention a good tripod. Uh, the the built-in uh, shutter delay or uh, that you have on these cameras is invaluable as well. Even if I'm outside and hand holding and taking a wrist shot, I always use the, the shutter delay so the camera isn't responding to the pressure of my finger. Um, get the watch clean and just have some fun. And you get much better with practice. If you saw the shots that I first started taking, uh, I thought I was uh, never going to take a, a decent picture of a watch. It all comes with time and practice, and it's a lot of fun. Thank you so much for participating, Brad. I hope you'll uh, come back to Chilling with Larry Megan and spend some more time with us. Okie doke. Take care, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you, Brad. Bye. Okay. I feel guilty, you know, cutting guys short yeah. like this, but we got one more guy. That's great input. All right, let's try one more. Yeah, and we're going to kill it off with Ryan. He's got some beautiful shots also. He's down in San Diego, California. Let's see if he's still with us. And uh, then we're going to give away the earrings. Let's see if we can get him on the phone. Um... So, Ginger, while we're doing that, you know, you might want to get the email box ready, the contest box, and uh, get ready for the drawing. We're going to do that after Ryan. Uh, Ryan, are you with us? Yeah, hi. How are you doing, Larry? Hi, you've been hanging in there, haven't you? Yeah, I watched the whole thing. Hey, Tim, how's it going? Hey, good, man. It's good to talk to you. Good to talk to you, now, too. Thank you. Now, Ryan, are you, do you have a handle on Watch Geeks? Yeah, it's Faroki. Uh, F is in Frank, A R R. Okay, I. Yeah, there he is. You see, he's kind of a hang loose California yeah, guy. He looks like you're a surfer. <laughs> <laughs> I wish, you know. I see a lot of people surfing down here. I'd like to give it a shot, but I'm kind of I don't like sharks. <laughs> okay, but you know, you sent Not us a, a lot of shots, and there's a. It was hard to kind of pick because uh, I, I kept eight in there, but they're beautiful shots, man. Oh, I appreciate that. Yeah, I'm actually. I'm not a photographer by trade. I started more with graphic design. I've been doing graphic design for the last uh, 10, 10 years. And um, my friend, my good friend, uh, Alex Antaliano, uh, gave me a, a Sony A200 as a gift a, a while back. And um, I started playing around with it, and he taught me some things, and it kind of just melded with my hobby of uh, watch collecting. Now, is this and, your uh, watch? I had it at one point, and that's the thing. I, I, I like. I would like to have every watch that I could possibly afford, but I tend to just sell them so I could buy another watch and wear it. So I kind of consider it like I collect every watch, but I don't have them anymore. <laughs> but that that corn. What do they call this one? This triangular shaped one. Trapeze. Oh. The trapeze. That's, that's it. That's trapeze. it. Was on the tip of my tongue. Yeah, that's not a cheap yeah. watch, man. No, I got a pretty good deal on it, and uh, that's kind of what spawned the photography. I, I I have to sell the watches and get my money back, so uh, I think a good photo really helps you uh, sell the watch. And uh, I actually started to take pride in, in taking these photos, and it just turned into a into a hobby. And it's just it's fun and relaxing, and passes the time, and kind of adds another element to the whole watch collecting. How did your, uh, if at all, did did your uh, background in graphic design import over in the photography? There are a lot of things that uh, surprisingly uh, kind of segue into that. Uh, one thing would be like angles, playing with angles, or like you mentioned earlier, the power of three. Mm -hmm. Three being splitting, splitting your area into three spaces and trying to balance, you know, less space on one side and the watch on the other. Um, or like incorporating three different things into the picture. It, it, like you said, it does have a big effect subconsciously on people. So, you know, splitting the field, um, other things like uh, positioning nice and angles. There's just so many different things that kind of translate into from graphic design, just having that designer's eye, you know. Sure. I like this one right yeah, tell here. Tell us, how did that, um, the, the one with the ice, man, how did that happen? Oh, I think it was ice. I, the, the ice one? Yeah, on the Neptune. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's it's interesting. It was for a little contest, and um, the F, that Neptune has that real icy look to it already, cold, you know, white, all white and gray. And I I wanted to put it in snow, but I'm in San Diego, <laughs> so <laughs> that wasn't going to happen. So I tried to look, but you know, I didn't find any snow. So I just was like, it dawned on me, you know, I got a refrigerator with an ice machine, and it's got the crushed ice button. So I just dumped a bunch of crushed ice into a bowl and shoved the Neptune in there, uh, purposefully crown side down, so it didn't show the fact that it was pulled out. Yeah. And uh, just tried to get it at the right angle to where it looked like it was just plunged into the tundra, you know what I mean? Well, and, yeah, uh, which it does. How, it, what, um, yeah. what, what lighting did you use on that? That's outdoors, and it was a cloudy day. I really like to take pictures on cloudy days because it kind of has a, it takes away the harshness. Yeah, of the light. yeah, new, shadowless, neutral gray, man. Yeah, yeah, it just gives it that equal lighting around the, the whole sure. area. Sure. And, and your ice so. looks your ice looks kind of milky. Did, did you put any milk in there or something? <laughs> no, no, no milk. I think it just started to melt in the sun, so it just. It kind of helped it out a little bit, I think. It put okay. some water on the dye, on the crystal, and, and it's one of my favorite shots. I'm glad you guys... Uh, I liked it on. a lot. Yeah, definitely it was one of my favorites of yours. What else we got in there, Ronnie? Oh, look at oh, this. Oh, Loom. Let's talk uh, Loom. Look uh, at this one. Okay, Loom. Walk yeah, us through Loom. this one. Loom's interesting. I like to take, you know, obviously, I take all, most of my pictures outdoors. Uh, I just, it's easier for me. I'm not photography savvy as far as the camera goes and lighting i'm more of the you know the art side of it but i take it outside and do my pictures outside and by the time i'm done with it it's nicely charged obviously from the sunlight which is one of the best sources of charging so then i take it inside and have my tripod already set up in a closet Mm -hmm. and um what i do is i put the watch down i use autofocus on the camera while the light's on in the closet yeah let it focus, and then I put it to manual mode with a with a you know a timed uh, shutter speed, and I pull the crown so it doesn't blur the second hand. Right. And uh, I turn the I turn the light off, and it's already focused from the autofocus before sure. I switch it to manual. And then I just you know take a, a, a not too long, but a timed uh, exposure, and uh, bring it into bridge, and you know tweak it a little bit. I don't want to you know, overblow the loom, but, uh, you know, turn the, turn the exposure up a little bit, and uh, that's pretty much the way I do the loom. I think we have another loom shot. Uh, no, I guess that was it, huh? Yeah, that was it. Yeah, that was my only loom shot. I threw, I threw a wrist shot. I didn't see anything about the wrist shot. But Now, is that a deep blue uh, watch right there? That's the deep blue Master 2003 uh, okay. with the inner in the ring, chapter ring. So, oh. uh... One thing I hadn't heard you guys mention was a bridge, Adobe Bridge, uh, Tim. You know, you mentioned Photoshop. But yeah. You, are you referring to bridge when you say Photoshop? No, I, I'm actually, uh, well, when I'm, um, here's, I first, okay, I'm getting tongue-tied. All right, I use CS5 Photoshop for my post, like if I'm going to uh, modify colors or yeah. do sandwiches or whatever I'm doing. Um, bridge, um, and maybe I'm just underusing it, I use Bridge like I've got a big file, like a folder I create full of my raw shots, right, and I'll right. use Bridge to go in and just look at all the thumbnails of that. Oh, yeah. That's my bread and butter, man. Like, you can control everything. That's, they literally, it's the Bridge to Photoshop. Like, I'll do... Your exposure, the sliders where you can mm-hmm. modify. Um, I mean, I'm looking at it right now. Exposure, uh, contrast. It just has all the, the essential photography related sliders that you don't really get in Photoshop. It's more geared towards raw images. I mean, that's the, the main purpose of Bridge. So that, I mean, that's a lifesaver. You can you can tweak the blackness, the the light. And that's a great point. You know, to, uh, you know, either uh, adding or, or contrasting the, the the black spectrum. And I'm in the church of raw anyway. I, I stay in the raw file as long as I can. That's what I like about the SLR. Once it's kind of like when you take a picture of a point and shoot, it's a flat image, and you can't uh, really control it after that, except with Photoshop filters and things like that. The bridge. I mean, you can take a dark photo and turn the exposure up, and it's like as if you had the exposure eye. 
And yeah. then you might get into Photoshop and use the uh, healing brush rather mm-hmm. than the stamp because the healing brush just, you just cl- literally, you just click the dust and it just disappears magically. It's insane. Yeah. So it, the healing brush is like a It's a, a beautiful thing. Stuff. Ryan, um, I really appreciate you st- hanging in here. You're the last one, you know. Uh, yeah. No you problem. know, and you hung in with us. You participated. I hope you come back to chilling, but don't don't leave us just yet, okay? First, okay. first, your final word, your final tip to anybody still watching the show, and then don't hang okay. up. Uh, well, I'd say uh, my final tip would be: you see a lot in a lot of my pictures. There's some interesting uh, backgrounds and surfaces. And uh, what I like to do is I like to go to a department store that has fabric mm-hmm. or a fabric store, and I just love to browse through the fabrics and find something that I think would play with light really well. And I'll take a couple yards of that, and you're only spending like four bucks or five bucks, maybe ten bucks max for really high end fabric, but you're giving yourself a really nice surface to f- take pictures on. Uh, so that's one thing I like to do. And then, like a lot of people said, take a lot, a lot, a lot of pictures so you can go in the bridge and just pick your favorite one and like the money shot, I like to call yep. it. Yeah. And uh, that's kind of how you end up with that one picture of that watch that you like. Cool. Very nice. Very Great nice. advice. Great call in on it. Thank you very much for the insight, man. I now, appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, thanks now, for having me. Oh, hang, hang on. Now, sure. what, I, what I want you to do is I want you to give me a number between 1 and 49. Okay. Ginger, get ready out here. We're going to give away a pair of earrings, and they're nice. Be a nice Valentine's gift. Now, if he ends up picking himself. You got entries in this, Ryan? <laughs> Uh, yeah. Okay. I was planning on looking at the emails and kind of counting. No, <laughs> you're not. You're not get, <laughs> I can't Ryan, use hearing. Hold on, Ryan. You're not going to be able that. to read them. Just give me a number between one and forty-nine. Watch him pick himself. It hasn't happened yet. Maybe we'll see a first. Go ahead. Give me a number. Seventeen. All right, seventeen. Ginger, we're on number one. Let's go to two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. Double click it. It hasn't happened yet where a guy picked his own number. Let's see. Double click it. And also give me a large screenshot, would you? Yeah, and scroll over to the left or to the to Yeah, let's see who we got here. Keep going. Keep going. You got to go to the left. Shannon Beard, Akron, Ohio. Well, there it is. I have played Akron, Ohio on several occasions. Shannon Beard from Akron, Ohio. I don't know if I'm saying it right, if it's Cannon or Shannon. Either way, you win the uh, earrings. Uh, Shannon, please uh, you know, send us an email with your uh, shipping address, and uh, you will be the winner. We'll ship them out to you. Ryan, uh, thanks so much uh, for participating oh, and, and, and hanging in there. And, you know, come back to chilling again in the future, okay? I really appreciate it. Uh, you guys have a good night. Thank and, you. Uh, you too. Maybe check out my blog if you guys can get a chance. Well, well let's, 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 uh, let's advertise it here. Give us your blog, Ryan. <laughs> what is blog. it? Rhinomatic.com. Rhinomatic? Yeah, R Y N O. M-A-T-I-C dot com. Cool. R-Y-N-O-M-A-T-I-C dot com. Rhinomatic yeah. dot com. And what I do you write about? You write about you write about design? I write articles about design of watches and uh, the watches that I like and resources and uh, uh, the photo gallery, galleries of my favorite pictures and stuff like that. Cool. And well, um, nice. you know, I'll, I'll post it up on the Acorn TV uh, fan page and... Uh, I'm going to go check it out myself. I haven't seen it yet. Thank you, guys. It was great talking to you. I really appreciate you having hey, me on Thank you. Thank you, Ryan. Okay. Take care. All right. Hey, Larry. Well, it's so late, and I'm worried about, you know, Ginger <laughs> out there because, yeah. you know, uh, it's late for her. It's very late. Okay. Um, all right. So uh, here's what we want to do. Um, we end every show with our Judy Garland moment. I'm doing a little different tonight. I'm going to have... Uh, a Frank Sinatra, Dean Martin uh, twist on it. So we're going to not actually have Judy, but we're going to actually cut the Judy moment at the end. But let's go to it. Always chasing rainbows. Somewhere over the rainbow, way up All right. Now, uh, tonight I'm doing...
doing a little bit of a stretch. You know, I always show a Judy moment, but I knew we were going to have a heavy male audience. This is the last few minutes of the show. So I went to a, a special that she did, a TV special. It was called Judy, Frank, and Dean. It was Judy Garland, of course, Dean Mar and Frank Sinatra and Dean Martin. And so I thought because we had so many guys here tonight, we would show Frank Sinatra and Dean Martin. It leads into Judy, but we're not going to, it's like seven minutes. Instead of that, we're just going to show the Sinatra and Dean Martin, and then we'll say goodbye. So let's go to it now. This was in the early 60s. I think this is 1963, if I'm not mistaken, possibly 64. Check it out. different in the uh, Judy segment tonight. Thank you, everybody, uh, for participating in the show and hanging in with us to the end here. Uh, great night, Tim. Any, it was, it was uh, night. Do it again. any last Let's words? Over here. Yes, uh, again, thank you, everybody, that sent in uh, pictures, stayed up with us, called, shared tips. Uh, I hope you guys learned a lot. I learned some stuff. Um, let's do this again uh, soon. To Larry's point. Absolutely. All right. Listen, everybody. Uh, Always keep uh, chasing those rainbows. Keep uh, pursuing your dreams. Follow your goals. Never give up. It's never over. Until next week, I'm Larry Megan. Peace, love, and all good things. Chill, chill, chill. With Larry Megan. Larry Megan.